Hey Gaming Nation, this is Gaming with the Guys. I'm Gaming Greg, and this week we're back, and we are just a mere five days out from Adepticon, or Adepticon just was just finished up five days ago. And tonight we are going to talk about what our experiences were at Adepticon. What do we play? What do we buy? What do we like? What do we dislike, aside from parking? Because parking is terrible at Adepticon. Uh, what do we eat? What do we do? You know, just to kind of give you a really good overview of Adepticon and to talk a bit about our tournament experiences, if we took if we took place any or anything like that. So, you don't want to just hear about my experiences because I'll be quite frank. My experiences were uh, I ran a lot of Bushido on Thursday, a lot of demos. I ran a tournament on Friday, uh, and then I totally lost a Saturday recovering from said Thursday and Friday and Sunday. I played the tournament. I'll talk about later. So instead, let's talk about people who actually got to enjoy the, the con. <laughs> and to do that, I am going to first bring in the fabulous gaming Jason. Hello. Parking sucked. Except it was funny watching all the people with the neon green stickers saying that their cars were going to get towed that, like 24 that hours. Was to that was entertaining nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, gaming Jason, you were there Thursday, you were there Friday, but you really weren't there Friday, Saturday or Sunday. So instead... Yeah. We're going to get someone who also got to enjoy. He literally got to enjoy the full four day experience this he year. Is, he is what we wish an Adepticon. Uh, we wish our Adepticons were. And that would be Grand Master Cody. Oh my gosh. There's a snow leopard. <laughs> and I actually got a full five days. <laughs> five days. He was actually there on Wednesday. Our Wednesday hangout was fun. Yeah. I actually enjoyed that. It was kind of nice, um, you know, sneaking into the vendor hall. <laughs> I was, I, I was going in to help people set up different booths. Yeah, literally. But... You're like going around to everybody, need help, need help, need help. Yeah. My ass is just there like, all right, cool. Let me go get my stuff real quick and then eh, whatever. <laughs> let me get my order. You know, even though your booth is now, you know, you're in the middle of building your booth. So yeah. let, 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 for, for, for those people uh, who are not familiar with a couple of things, let's talk first. So Adepticon. Adepticon wa is a gaming convention uh, and, and to be specific, it is a miniature gaming convention. So that kind of sets it apart from Gen Con. But it, it is the largest miniature gaming convention, uh, not just in the Midwest, but probably in the United States. I, yeah, I'm not sure North about America. the world. I would say North America. Yeah, yeah. For sure I, I North America. For sure North America. LVO is not quite the same size, and I know Nova is not the same size. Nah, LVO uh, is mostly 40K stuff, so... Uh, yeah, and it's gaming. very competitive. Yeah. It's more it's it's definitely more competitive than Adepticon. Um, you know, Adepticon at its roots was just 40k. That's right. why it had the gear symbol and all the rest of it. I am extremely happy into what it's grown into. Um, it is uh, it's every miniature game that you can, uh, you know, it makes a thing. Not just the big miniature games. I mean, you had you had your 40K, you had your AOS, you had your Kill Team, you had your Warcry. You, you had all were, the stuff from uh, Fantasy they, or Crisis Protocol, Shatterpoint. Everything from Private Atomic Legion. Mass games. Yeah, they had a huge thing. And they, I mean, they had these huge rigs to do the taping of battle reports and all the rest of it. You had every influencer social media type for gaming. Uh, yeah, all the Twitch there. streamers, all, all, the, the, all the big name artists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not even just for Golden Demon, but Resin Beast and all the other painting what, competitions. Yeah, what were the, what were all the painting competitions? I know there was Golden Demon. There was the so, Creature Gold, Caster. Golden Demon is Adepticon's that's painting the, competition. Well, that's, no, no, that's, 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 that's GW's. That's GW's. I, I know, but it's like a marquee it, event. It, it, yeah. It's, it's the um, one because that's why Crystal Brush went away. It used to be Crystal yeah. Brush and Golden Demon couldn't be there, but yeah, whatever. So Golden Demon decided they were going to be snobby and not go. And Crystal yeah. Brush was there, and I, I, I'll be honest, Crystal I Brush, better. Crystal Brush, because yeah. you got to use anything, any figure, yeah. But um, so the big ones are the Golden Demon, 
the resin beast, which is creature caster, parabellum, judgment. Uh, there's like two or three other things that are all part of that. Okay. Atomic Mass had one, I think. Yeah, because yeah, I saw there's a showcase on that side of the floor. Or another. Yeah, I don't remember. It's some stupid name, and sorry if I offend <laughs> anyone, but I, it's stupid because you can only enter Marvel Crisis Protocol figures. You can't do any yeah, new really or anything like that. I thought it was Path of the Worthy or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I think everyone's calling it the worthy or something. I don't know. I, I think it's dumb, but I also am not a fan of that game. And that's just my personal opinion. That's, that's well. fine. So anyway, so that's three. Privateer Press had a painting competition. Um, and I actually uh, got one-on-one -on -one feedback from a judge from that one. So that was kind of nice. cool. That is um, nice. I know Badger Games always does a little painting competition where you get a free figure and then you paint it and they get to keep it, but that's kind of cool. You get store credit for it. Nice. nice. Um, uh, there's one more that I'm blanking on. Um, but the nature, yeah. every And a lot of the events will have a best painted for the event and things yeah. like that, but those yeah. are much smaller scale. Every single event does it where whatever it is like Bushido it's best warband Moonstone was best warband Freeblades is a whole mess of different things um but yeah so a lot of different painting competitions that you can enter and certain ones too like Freeblades for example um we had people mail figures because they weren't able to go whether it was oh, for yeah. COVID or whatever yeah. illness and their stuff got judged and actually a couple of the people won that's that's, cool. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I will say so. Before I talk a little more about uh, about other things at Adepticon, for Bushido, which the was the Grandmaster I ran, I did bring in a judge. Uh, that way, it was less of a popularity contest and more on painting merit. And and I think I liked that better um, mm -hmm. from my standpoint. Um, also, he but, didn't know the game at all, which was kind of cool. He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to this blind. I don't know shit about this. I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of jacked about this." I've sold him on a lot of Bushido already. So. I know, I know. We'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about the fallout of the convention too, because uh, you know, Gaming Greg may not be running the uh, the Grandmasters next year for for Adepticon 2025, but I'm going to be doing a lot of demoing in the Midwest <laughs> between yeah. now and then. Yeah, I'm being dragged with you. Maybe, maybe not. You know, yeah. Could, I, this could be a solo act here, <laughs> boyo. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the, the painting competition we had, we we did the little painting competition for Bushido. I did have someone ask, and and and, I, and I'd have to think about this whether it had to be the force that they were using in the match, or if they could just play with one of the match, but then put forward one of the, their, you know, one that they painted to competition level. I was See, a stickler this time. And I said, it had to be used. I would like the option because mm -hmm. as much as I loved my prefecture of America, I do think my Edo were painted better and I just didn't want to play them this year. <laughs> it's Edo. Well, um, you wanted to win, but I, yeah, well, <laughs> the person that won was going to win no matter what I would have had to pull a miracle out of my butt to beat that list paint wise oh yeah the paint for painting competition that was yeah that was sensational and i am glad because i'm very good friends with the judge that gaming greg brought in so i usually send stuff to him for feedback and i had to be very careful because i was like he's judging bushido so i can't send any of that <laughs> <laughs> and we, yeah and, and and to make sure that it was it was non-biased i had every every participant and i'll probably put some pictures up every participant had a card that had a number on it their name was on the back but the judge only saw the number right. uh so that way um you know, he, he couldn't he couldn't know whose was what. And if you didn't show him ahead of time what yours was, then he went in kind of blind. Oh, yeah. I um, even had him guess which warband was mine after the judging was complete. Mm -hmm. And he did not pick my warband. So, <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> I was like, oh, it must have sucked. <laughs> so, so, again, uh, Adepticon is just this, this great experience, uh, again, Lots of lots of very competitive events are going on. Lots of narrative events going on. Hundreds of demos going on. Um, and then there's all. And then honestly, then there's all of the 
the classes. I mean, I, if you were to divide that, you could almost make a separate convention of just the painting classes and the modeling classes that take place, you know, from how to use an airbrush to non-metallic, non-metallic metallic painting, um, the whole nine yard. I mean, everything you could, how to do faces, how to do eyes, how to do this, how to do that. It's just, it's an incredible experience. And then just catching up with people. Uh, that's probably my, my favorite thing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the post Bushido grandmasters get together and drink and just blow off steam. Cause the damn thing's done is just enjoyable or the sit around on Wednesday after we've kind of set up and people are just kind of filing in to see who's coming in and saying hello. That's another great time. So it's, if you, if you are not familiar and haven't done it and are able to do so, I, I highly recommend going to Adepticon. It's uh, it's an experience and you will find a game to play. Oh, yeah. Even if you don't sign up for a tournament, if you just want to come out and just see what it's all about, like you can spend at least two full days in the vendor hall and not see everything. And it's not that the vendor hall is that big. It's just no. there's a lot but of shiny it, stuff in there. It's getting bigger. That I is mean, true. I mean, the, the, the vendor hall is now spilled out into the hallways wow. of, of the yeah. con now. Yeah, because the second floor. Yeah, the second floor. There was stuff on the second floor. There was stuff in front of the Schomburg room. Last year, it was just Catalyst was in front of the Schomburg mm -hmm. room, the ballroom. Yeah, I forgot about the whole hallway, too. Yeah, yeah. the hallway had a bunch of different stuff. It, there was a cool backpack company that was also miniature case and clothing. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat then. Yeah. Elric's well, game then, was across the way from there. That's yeah, the Elric's had two booths. Because mm -hmm. they had the one in the hallway and then the one in the vendor hall. Oh, they did part one of the vendor hall. Okay. Yeah, it was part of the creature caster. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And then the other venue, the Hyatt Regency, also had like three or four vendors. That's what people are saying. At, at least that what I saw. Mm -hmm. I didn't walk no. around the whole thing, but um, yeah, it was I, nice I, to I, see that they had the the stuff tailored for the historicals over there at least. I could confirm that uh, that uh, there were at least three vendors over at the Hyatt. So yeah. again, Adepticon has gotten so big, it does not fit in the Schomburg Convention Center anymore. Um, it has to go into another hotel, which unfortunately, I wish it was at the embassy, but the embassy doesn't have ballrooms or anything like that that can fit that kind of, you know, fit events and vendors and whatnot. Um, so it's over at the Hyatt. And which is more, it has ballrooms and conference rooms and things like that. So it can have that kind of stuff. It's just, that means it's about a mile and a half. I wouldn't say two miles, but mile and a half, two miles away. Yeah, it takes less than five minutes by car. You can walk there. But the problem is, is once you park your car at Adepticon, <laughs> you, and you can walk oh. it. If, if, weather, if weather's good, you can walk it. I won't yeah. lie. <laughs> weather this year sucked. Yeah. You know what? Well, you go, Cody, and then I'll, I'll we'll talk weather. I was going to say, they also started the shuttle service. I know they mm -hmm. did it last year, but this year it was more it's, refined. And yeah. um, I know I had a lot of family come visit, and they didn't even bother parking at the main campus. They went straight over to the Regency and took the shuttle over. That's yeah. smart. That was smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I showed up hell? late on Saturday. <laughs> I showed up after them, and I had to park. I actually parked at the embassy and walked the, the half mile uh, to the con. That's what uh, I did on Saturday. <laughs> Well, I, I will get in early enough. So, oh, let, let, let's, let's, let, let's, let's, I'm going to try to bring this in and we'll, we'll get some structure to this discussion. <laughs> I didn't up. make an outline for us. <laughs> I totally didn't either. Uh, so this is a bit off the cuff. So let's, let's talk about our, our experiences. Um, first, let's, uh, I, I'll, let, we'll talk about each our agendas and things that we, we had scheduled that we were going to do. Um, for the con so for myself I'll, I'll go really briefly because mine's really easy and i've already said it wednesday was set up for me for set, getting all my stuff in and then making sure um art from gets a palooza got his stuff in and was setting up tables so we were ready for open play on thursday uh also we like to take people out we go we try we tried to go out for dinner uh over at mitsua but we would we, we just got late. Uh, Mitsua is a Japanese grocery store slash mall with this great food court that has a whole bunch of different ramen places and uh, um, uh, meat on a stick. Um, yakitori. Yakitori stand yeah. and a whole... And, and that's where we go shop for our sake. sake. Um, so we got there. Unfortunately, the food court was closed because we got there closer to 8 o'clock. 
um, at night. And so we ended up going out to eat beef. But that, that was Wednesday. Was really good. Beef was very, very good. Um, so that was our, you know, at least I got my sake, sake shopping done. I got my adult juice boxes. I got a couple bottles. So I was at least ready for, for Friday. Um, Thursday, Thursday, then first day of the con real first official day of the con or second official day of the con, depending on how you look at it. I call it day one. Um, it's, it's day one. Yeah. Was open play. Uh, and I'll talk more about open play and that later. Uh, Friday was running the Grand Masters for Bushido. Uh, that's an all that's twelve hours. Um, and then Saturday was when I was supposed to do events. I had two Drowned Earth events scheduled for me. I didn't play in either of them. I think the best I did is is I uh, I got ready for my other tournament, which the one tournament I was scheduled for on Sunday, which was for Cyberpunk. Uh, to refresh myself with the rules, uh, me and Doctor Dice uh, camped ourselves out in the Schomburg Hall, which was blessedly quiet because the AOS players had left for the night and uh, and played a, played a game or two of that to familiarize ourselves with the rules. So I, had I played everything, and I had a couple other demos scheduled that I didn't do because I was going to play in the Leviathans demo on Sunday and I was going to do the Star Trek... Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's their new weird comp spaceship simulator thing by WizKids that I can't remember the name of. Cyberpunk took pressing over and I did that. I got a little bit of shopping in. So that that was my schedule for the weekend. Uh running stuff for half of it, half of it then was for me. Um Jason, what what did you have scheduled? Because you but you were only there for a couple days, really. Well, my stuff was really only the Bushido stuff. I didn't have anything else scheduled. I was thinking maybe I was gonna sneak in Arena Rex, but my to appease family obligations, I didn't push it for the weekend. <laughs> And that's not unusual. <laughs> so, <laughs> Spoiler for Arena X possible Gen Con release. Oh, nice. oh yeah. Well, and I talked to Walk, and I did get Walker on that. And I talked with him, so we'll we'll talk oh, a little nice. bit about Arena X. Awesome. Okay. I know he didn't mention that he was actually going to release anything, but he said that he did have stuff in the works for next year. Okay. Um, he said, yeah, he was telling me it might happen depending on how the pipeline goes, but yeah, okay. yeah. And you'll notice uh, I'm drinking a lot of water because I'm still recovering my voice. From Thursday and Friday, uh, I was very, very hoarse on Saturday. <laughs> uh, not as bad as a certain uh, GCT employee who was not able to talk at all. Yeah. Uh, and that was only halfway Poor through guy. the day on Thursday. I felt <laughs> I bad know. for him, but he was totally couldn't talk. Uh, so, Jason, you, you just had Bushido stuff. And I will say a, a big thank you both to Gaming Jason and Josh from Bushido Badgers for supporting me on Thursday. Thursday for open play was supposed to be just real casual. People could pop in, play a game or two. I thought I might try to structure a, a very unstructured tournament, uh, a, a something fun to do if people want to take part in it, uh, and just have a lot of fun. And maybe I'd do a de few demos here or there. What it turned out to be was between... Pick, I got a few pickup games, and I got two, got or, I got two or three pickup games in where... Oh, yeah, three pickup games. One, I got Adelie Destroyed. The other two was a more of a, a slightly more in-depth demo, and then the last one for the night was an actual game. Um, but I was definitely... But, yeah, for me, Thursday was just way more demos than I thought I was planning on doing, where it was like, was how homeless. are you running the demo event? This is what I'm telling them to do. Okay, cool. And I basically just did that, and I was cranking out their demos like crazy. I sure, and I, I would say my demos were more lengthy. I have to learn how to shorten them up dramatically. I, well, I did what you told me, which was like two idols, and then if they oh, face yeah. the same direction, then I, the person wins. I did, a I did a much longer explanation of the rules. Oh, I, I well, I did the like I did like the base, like here's Bushido the game, and then after I did mm -hmm. that, because I it was just a lot of information, I go real fast. I was like, all right, here's the basics of the game. Let's start playing, and then just letting the players go. Most of the games didn't get past turn two, or I usually had a definitive winner by the end of turn two, maybe beginning of turn three. Yeah, usually by turn on three, they each other. And we only had three figures aside, and we were starting, yeah, so we were starting I was, about 10 to 12 inches up the board. 
Yeah. So, um, so I was able to get through demos pretty quickly. And then my last demo was definitely more fun because it was like the guys were stressing themselves out because it was basically like if me and Cody were learning how to play, except as bragging rights. I was like, oh, yeah, go ahead. This is basically what a master's level event is going to make you feel like anyways. Yeah, pretty much. So we, between me, Jason, and Josh from uh, Bushido Badgers, I think we cranked through about 30 demos. Yeah. And that was largely because... And I have some pictures. I, uh, the pictures that I have of the GCT booth don't do justice to just how swamped they were. Yeah. Uh, you can never get in there. I mean, you can never get in there, but this year was particularly Bad. amazing. They couldn't Very even well. do demos in there because yeah. it was so crowded. So they were sending all the demo people to the open play. And the Man. reason being is, as it should be, our position in the hall was. The first Stella. thing you saw when you walked into the 40 K hall, which is adventure hall at, uh, at Adepticon, your first thing you saw when you walked in and even kind of when you walked into the farthest door for the, for the, uh, exhibit the hall. hall, Gordon gave me a banner, uh, to put up for there. I'd asked him that for a couple of years. He got me the banner and boy, did it pay dividends mm -hmm. because I put that thing right there. And the first thing you saw was the Bushido banner and then all these boards and people playing with cool miniatures, cool boards. And I, that fired people to play. And I am seeing the, seeing the effects of it even after the con, because uh, on the discord and everything else, I'm seeing such uh, a lot more new players Mm -hmm. asking for demos or where people are playing and so on and so forth. So like I said, I'm going to be demoing a bunch. I know I'm going to the city probably next weekend, city of Chicago next weekend, down to Dice Dojo and doing some demos and playing some games there. And I'm probably going to be going up to uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin Kenosha. sometime in April uh, to play some games out there. And then even at Games Plus tonight, I was out there this Friday night here in Chicago, uh, or Chicago area, I should say, and somebody at Games Plus was looking for demos. So, and again, I've run the events and whatnot, but we never did an open play. It was always the Grand Masters. We were always buried. We, Schomburg Room, I loved being in. Another time we were buried somewhere in the middle of the hall. When Art ran it, it was buried in the middle of Adventure yeah. Hall. All Where we back. were was awesome. Yeah. It's exhausting. You awesome. couldn't ask for a better spot no, for us to be placed. Yeah, and we they were even asked for like one row away. Like, from from where we were, you went to the first row down, and then yeah. they were right you there. Had, you, there was no when you walked in that hall, there was no way you could avoid seeing Bushido. Period. So that was absolutely fantastic. Even the guys from GCT are like, "Did you have to do anything to get that?" And I'm like, honestly, no. The only reason we got it was because every other uh, all the other rows of tables were double tables because they're expecting either four by you know a uh, four by four three by three or uh, four by six mats for playing. Bushido's a two by two. So we just needed to have that little, you know, th we only needed a single table and the best place to put those two rows of single tables was right by the front of the door. You know, they had to make sure there was a certain distance for fire code and whatnot. And we, we met it, but it was, it was great. Um, and I think if things go again, like they did, this year, they probably are going to have us there again next year, uh, or whoever is going to be running it. <laughs> uh, so, gaming Jason's, I could fill him in real quick. So he did the, he did the open play. He played in the Grand Masters, and like you said, not much else after that. But Cody had the full schedule. Oh, good so lord! Let's, let's get to Cody. So what what was your Adepticon <laughs> schedule look like? We could talk specifics so, later. Well, Wednesday was picking friends up from the airport, and then checking into the hotel, and then going to set up and mm -hmm. teach a friend Moonstone. Um, <laughs> then, so he signed up for the tournament to learn to play the game. Yeah, he, he hadn't even looked at figures before. He was like, yeah, sounds good. So we did that. <laughs> and then Thursday was Moonstone. Friday for me was the Bushido Grandmasters. And then Saturday was Freeblades, basically Grandmasters. Um, sure. Yeah, and then Sunday I left open in the hopes to make the cut for Freeblades, which didn't happen, oh, but yeah. <clears throat> that's all right. So Sunday was run around and pick up all the uh, competition paint pieces. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you were in how many, which, what competitions were you in for painting? 
So other than the the tournament competitions, mm -hmm. I was in the Resin Beast with two entries, the Privateer Press with one entry, and the Golden Demon with one entry. Okay. Okay, so that's again, for, and that's not unusual. And you didn't take any cla painting classes or anything like that. Oh god, I don't even look at those during registration because it's just up like so fast. Yeah, just like getting a hotel room at main campus, it's like two minutes and they're sold out. So usually, mm -hmm. I secure my swag bag, check out, go back in, add the tournaments that I want, and then I'm good to go. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else. Da, 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 da. So that, that was basically everybody's thing. So I don't have, you know, let's, let's kind of peel back to your guys experience. Cause we, we pretty much covered open play. Open play was pretty straightforward. Um, before we talk about your moonstone, let's just talk about you just briefly. We'll go over the Bushido, the, the grandmasters, um, four rounds, uh, I thought we. I thought I timed it. Each round was two hours, and and when I say give or take, it means give because I would always add extra time on. Mm -hmm. We had a couple snafu technical snafus at the beginning, and at the start of round four four, um, and the, the the technical things were is because we had people people adding on, and the and and the one add on at the beginning of the tournament then cost. A, Put us at uneven numbers, so then I had to pull in my ringer, uh, Zach Moore, Zach who who helps out with the GCT booth. He was going to be the official ringer, so he came in, but he wasn't there right away. <laughs> so we had a delay until we could get him in and, and start the tournament. Um, but you know, two hours, half hour in between rounds, hour and a half for dinner. I thought. I thought it went really well. Um, so le, le, how, did, how did you guys go? Uh, and how did your, you know, what were your placings? What your experiences, you know, without going into excessive, you know, tactical and strategic detail? You want to go first, Chase, or you want me to? Sure, I can go first as long as my son does not run over and say hi to Grandpa again. Uh, you know, he can't help it. His grandpa's <laughs> an awesome dude. Yeah. Uh, so I finished eighth. Which, okay. with the rose list that I was going into, goal for me was to at least finish top five, but fell a little bit short because a certain other Grandmaster whooped my ass in round three. <laughs> so that was, and I was going to say that I was figuring you two faced each other in round three. Um, a spoiler alert, they faced each other in round three. Yeah. Um, I figured it was going to be some, somebody was going to annihilate somebody on that one. And, um, yeah, it happened. And, and the funny thing is, you guys had played each other a week before, or two weeks before, like two weeks before, I think. Endless, almost, or very close to it. Uh, it was the same. No, because mm -hmm. I, I didn't have Zendaka painted, so I had some other, I had yeah. some other modified stuff, and then all of a sudden, it's like, holy shit, Jason actually did. Jason actually painted, and now I have to deal with this actual yeah. threat. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Crit Strike. Yes. <laughs> um. um but so, rounds one and yeah, two for it. me, I won those. They were all pretty close rounds. Round one, that was a 2-0, um, and that pretty much went to time. Just it was a really close back and forth game against Onis. Oh, Round okay. two was against Kinchi, and my opponent wanted to give me the 3-0, but I was like, no, dude, you still got a chance to like maybe nab a point from me. And it was partly he didn't quite understand the scenario after me explaining it like three times. And it's like, well, let's just play it out just to basically just show you what it was and end up losing the point there. But I mean, he did what he needed to do to make sure that he got his point. So it wasn't just mm -hmm. like, eh, here, take the point. Um, got my butt kicked by Cody round three. And then round four, I played against brotherhood. Um, and oh, that, that was, was that a, the beautifully painted one. Yeah, it was, but I wasn't yeah. paying too much attention to how they were painted. Uh, everybody was, was kind of wiped by round yeah. four. Uh, round, uh, yeah. it's, it's I was like just playing being in the, but, uh, yeah. But that uh, was a uh, round four. Was that it was against a very nice who won the painting contest. Um, and I mean, from what I did see, I was like, oh, those do look really nice. I just didn't look too into too deep into them because it was just you know, just playing the game. Yeah. Um, and I won that one three zero. Okay. And just uh, just to kind of let you guys know again, if you if you want to see this, if, for those of you who are watching, if you wanted to see the placements, the total uh, total army lists and all the rest of it all that information is in long shanks uh it would be the adepticon grand masters 2024 or 2024 adepticon grand masters uh, is the posting for it all the information's there 
but to let you know before Cody starts going, um, the rounds, um, round one scenario was the idols. Round two was Osatsu. Round three was Ichi no Riten, which was the VIM and zone. And round four was depletion, uh, which was the ring objective, uh, scenario. Uh, so yeah, that, that, so the two of you were playing Ichi no Riten, which a lot of those, a lot of those, uh, finished pretty quick because they rolled the five to, to end uh but yeah it, 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 it was good so so that was jason's experience cody how was yours <sighs> stressful and it shouldn't have been <laughs> it was really stressful round three and, the, uh, like, and round the four. whole time where it's just like, oh. oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh and i've already cracked open my i've already cracked open my truly my white claw or whatever like that i'm like yeah i'm enjoying this <laughs> Oh, well, well, on top table, right? Well, no, that so, was round three that I cracked it open because I gave one to Art because I was like, Art, do you want one too? And he's like, Oh, let me take a look at that. Oh, yeah, I could totally do this. It's like, cool, go for it. Yeah, I started drinking it round three. Uh, Art alcohol came out after I lost to Cody, after. and then I also and then I offered that to Art too, and Art's like, Oh, yeah, I definitely would like that. Thank you. Yep. So, um, yeah, I guess good news just with Adepticon in general. I stayed out of the hospital this year, so woo, that was oh, I thought you were gonna. I thought I was gonna trip something when you played me when it got towards the end. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. I'm watching the window icon <laughs> pop up right there. It's like, yeah. oh, Cody's gonna blue screen right here, right here if I make this roll. That's how I was feeling. Um, so yeah, so round one. Well, I played the. I, I call it Thunder and Lightning. It's this dumb Ryu gunline list that is not optimal. Um, my ass it's not optimal i start up no, 12, there, i start eight inches up the board and just shoot good luck there's, there's other stuff that makes it more optimal um i think his name's bo me or something sorry if i butcher it on discord he has a whole write-up of like everything that you should do with ryu and mm -hmm. it's good i didn't read it i just this list i made back in 2022 when i won the grandmaster with temple i was like all right we gotta win with ryu now um yeah, decided to not play it in 23 and brought it this year. So it was just for fun. I didn't want to necessarily think. I, I literally wanted to have a blast, blow people off the board and laugh about it. And then if I get slaughtered, so be it. Um, instead, <laughs> yeah, instead. So round one was the mirror match with Ryu. Um, that one really came down to do I leave the dragon alive or do I leave Akio alive so that way I can get the 3-0. Mm -hmm. um, I, I chose to leave Akio alive because it was easier. The dragon's a little bit easier to hit. Um, <laughs> so we did that, got the 3-0. Game two, I played against Ito. Okay. And I was destroying my opponent. This was Osatsu. I took Itagawa with Vile, uh, Dragon's Vigor specifically for the scenario so he could turn the idol turn one. And with the complex. So I did now, that. Before you go, but saying that the scenarios were not released to the players ahead of time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I always design my list around Osatsu because I know Gaming Greg and that is one of the favorites. One of my favorites. Yeah, well, that, and they've actually updated like at least what sacred idols. There's a, I think there's two or three scenarios now where it's like the first scenario action you take is a complex. So yeah, it, I, it makes I, sense now uh, in this update. Yeah, that is it's true. Sacred idols is another one. I think there's like one other no, where the first scenario action you take, or there's something where a scenario action at some point is going to be a complex. So it's making more sense to take those types of models or those types of enhancements to get that uh get that third activation homage yeah. homage is the first is the new idols one where the first scenario action is of the game is complex and uh, honestly i feel like osatsu should be played in every tournament it's such a good scenario um, I, it's it's and uh, not to uh, i'll apologize for interrupting you the reason why i like it is it's not just scenario it i'm sorry it's not just objective it's not just zone it's both right so you have to prepare to deal with both. Yeah. Um, so that that's why I like that one. It's always but, funny because the boards, like, they're, like, very heavy against Osatsu. It's like, no, it's not the... They like Muzukashi, I think, is, like, the... Uh, yeah, Muzukashi... Uh, is, is, like, is the, like, the... Oh, the ideal, everywhere. like, perfect Bushido-type scenario. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, well, that one kind has of, a but bit I, of everything. I prefer... Yeah. I prefer Omaju because, also, you can't bork it as hard with... Uh, with like cards like pacifism. 
Yeah, which I didn't. Well, it, you continue, and then uh, then we'll talk about uh, our our, obs- uh, our observations. general observations of not just what you guys did, but the tournament in general. So, so yeah. So, game two, Ido. He had uh, Itsunagi and Yatsumata. Um, I killed everything else at range. Poor Satoshi. <laughs> um, <clears throat> <laughs> so that was also one. I, I had the idol. I had the first scenario point locked down had to decide do i leave the two-headed snake up or it's an up uh <laughs> i tried to shoot it's an in combat because he was next to the signal flag so i was like all right we'll give it a sh-. yeah killed my own guy and then it's killed everything um so i ended up winning because my opponent didn't realize that when you kill everything the game ends and so it ended turn four with me winning one zero oh. yeah um so there's that, because uh, Hero died to poison, so that was kind of the, the issue there. Um, game three was against Jason, and it was the most stressful game. Actually, it wasn't. Game four was the most stressful, but... It was building it, to it. <laughs> it's just every time I play Jason, it's high intensity, and really, I, I hate playing Jason, and I hate playing Brian in the tournaments, and same with a couple of the, the Madison guys, and it's not because it's stressful, because we're like we know each other it's because it's like it sucks that you're playing against your buddy you know yeah um yeah and and you're very familiar with each other and and there's the stresses and i'll say for the two of you because you've known each other you know forever uh and been competing either with you know on the same teams but still competing with each other that's yeah another layer right there yeah Yeah. and we get under each other's skin and then we're fine afterwards right. but it just <laughs> it, it, it is what it is and then game 4 i game failed four. i'm sorry everyone i let temple win <laughs> oh and actually i didn't let temple win the scenario let temple win oh blame it on the scenario i do blame it on the scenario. so the game it was I, decreasing I, I, yeah, so uh, to start, I should have switched sides. It would have made my life easier shooting the foxes. Um, I didn't because I was lazy. So <laughs> there was that first mistake. And then my opponent didn't realize that the scoring was turn two on that one, I believe. Yeah, to that start. one's also weird. It's like score turn two, score turn three, score the rest whenever you fucking feel like it when the game yeah. ends. So, so that one... He he messed up. I knew like he read the scenario a hundred times, but um, he forgot to do the scenario action. So I scored turn two. Great. Well, then it's decreasing, not decreasing popular, not decreasing scoring, decreasing. So this is where I have an issue with the scenario because he was able to take a three point idol out of the game and essentially run away with it at that point. Um. The the idol that got scored on was one of the middle idols, a two pointer, and it would have made for a very interesting game had that gone away. Just because we both would have been pinging the back idols. Hey, there's the prefecture of America. Um. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Adam H, our judge, for taking these pictures because I was both wiped and not thinking, uh, and I didn't take a whole lot of pictures. But. Uh, aside from that, like that sucked. Um, you know, hopefully it was played right. If not, then whatever, so be it. Uh, it did get down to the point where if I didn't lose Itagawa, I would have actually ended up winning two one at the very end of the game uh, with like the last activation. We I think we went turn seven or something like that. Whatever the last possible turn we could go to, we went to. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, it, it was very close, and congratulations to Carl oh. for being, you know, Grandmaster again. Uh, unfortunately, it was with Temple. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> yeah, so it, overall it was good. It wasn't supposed to be a stressful Grandmaster tournament. I just wanted to have fun, which I did have fun, and then I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't. <laughs> uh, overall, though, like it, it was good. I, I don't have any regrets. I don't have any complaints. Like, you know, next year we'll see what I come up with. What stupidity. So, and and depletion was there, and it was one of those I wanted to have in because it's been changed slightly. 
Now, the old version of depletion that I'm used to said uh, decreasing popular. popular. Mm -hmm. That's been removed. It was just decreasing. So, yeah, that I think is. I, I don't it, either. Uh, I'm not, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Either that needs to be clarified because, again, I re I read it, I reread it, I I, I chimed in a couple things, and unfortunately, I couldn't chime in to get some other people's opinions off the boards because it was six well, o'clock that we started. No, no, it was uh, yeah, no, it was five thirty. Uh, Central Standard Time US that we started it, so it was late wherever everybody else was. Um, so I made the decision. That's how I interpret it. It was decreasing, and since it wasn't specified what the decreasing trigger was, whether it was popular, whether it was scoring, that meant it's any. Which yeah. they've had that before. Right. And if that's the case personally not just because i lost but from a tactical standpoint i feel like that's a mistake for this scenario it's for um, the six idle ones it shouldn't be an yeah. option for that just because the facing matters so much for those types well, of, of scenarios not even that it, it it gives your fast factions more of an advantage you sack the first point because you can get rid of a three-pointer and then you can just run stuff around and pop the back three and they can only score on one mm -hmm. or even if you're not a fast faction you just flank heavily on the one side you ignore the one three-point idol because you know you're going to remove it and mm -hmm. away you go and that that's essentially what happened so uh, uh, no, go ahead keep going i've i just switched yeah. something so 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 basically we, we were split pretty even i had two models on the right flank and then the gun line on the left so that was four models um and coda was able to because he removed the with me looking at the board the left his left three or my left three point idol mm -hmm. so the one that would be three points for me um my gun line was unable to score on that side so, and coda was able to mirage or whatever ability out mm -hmm. fox form run 10 and a half inches fox form or go back to human form and next turn score at the idol or next activation score at the idol, you know, and even uh, when I tried to move stuff back there, just the Mirage one key versus three key, it's hard to, to beat and oppose key tests there. So yeah, I just, well, does Mirage work? I didn't think that Mirage worked when you were shooting or two. I thought it only worked in melee. Uh, well, I didn't, I couldn't get reload tokens. So um. off. So I wasn't really shooting much at that point. Um, so yeah, it just, it, it feels bad. And I, maybe it is just because of that situation, but just from looking at it, pen and paper, it just, in my opinion, it almost feels like you sack that point on turn two and just ensure that you've got three and four or three and five or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so, and, and this is going to be, uh, again, Assuming that we're playing it right, which I think we did, and uh, from from a judge's standpoint, as I get to make the ruling on it, it was. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of look at it like Osatsu. Osatsu, you have a, you have a choice to make. If you decide that you want to, you know, if if you're going to try and make sure that your opponent cannot, if you're going to go for that first point, which is friendly objectives. And you want to guarantee you're going to do it. That means you're flipping two, two objectives. Typically the center objective and then one of the zones. As soon as you flip one of those objectives on a zone, you're playing catch up. Now it's easier to defend that zone because that zone now, if it's friendly to me, I'm scoring only one point in that zone, but my opponent's three and then the other zone's two. So... You kind of have to make a choice. I'm going to go for that first point. Now, the only thing that I would say with depletion, and again, I haven't really, I haven't tried it myself um, since the changes have gone through on it. The only thing I would say with depletion is, is if it's going to be, you know, any uh, any objective is removed, you know, may, the opponent may choose to remove an objective, then don't reset scoring. 
because yeah, it, rese- it resets on three and five. Because then what I may try to do is I'll try to get up the board and score, do one or two prayers on a three, knowing that my opponent's going to take it. But yeah. I got six, I got three points in the can, maybe six points if I could do it right. Yeah, and I I guess too part of it, and shame on me for not reading it. And even if I would have read it honestly during the convention, I wouldn't have caught that. I would have thought that it was decreasing popular, decreasing scoring. So it it caught all is what I think it caught every participant by surprise, and it caught the judge by surprise. I knew it was decreasing. I just assumed, much like you said. Um, but then when you look at it, no, it doesn't say scoring. It doesn't say popular. I looked up and down that rule packet. Now, if there was an errata on the rule packet, bad on me. Yeah, but that's kind of a but, weird place to put an errata for a tournament packet. Right. <laughs> and, and either way, like that was so. I got the first scenario point. So he was able to remove it. Like I knew what I had to do after that. And we knew that like the next point, whoever scored would get to remove another one, whatever. So but, like, then you're up, but if you get that victory point, then you're up two, two Oh, well, right. And that, that's the part that, that in game terms, not even just complaint for the scenario, I would have been able to at least get one gunman on the three point idol and pray. Mm-hmm. Um, for three points, which would have made the difference because our game ended 10 to nine, I believe. That's tight. And I still had two prayer tokens. 10 to nine, even though you were resetting on five, right? Yeah, that was just the. Uh, the that's pretty. That's, yeah. that's good. Well, they went all the way to seven. So that makes oh, sense. That, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, like, and that you guys was were conserving thing. your prayer tokens and scoring only on the big points. You weren't going for friendlies. That's well, for sure. I only I scored two on turn two. Okay. So that was my first one. I didn't do anything for turn three because. It, or for he, score, yeah, for scoring. He for, had everything. Like, he prayed twice. I was like, okay, I got to save everything for the, the last point. So you're you know, one one. You were one one going into the turn five, right? And okay. he he only had three tokens, uh, so he had he had nine points. Sorry, because um, he scored three on the the. So, yeah, the and then you had the, but you had three turns to do it. That's okay. That's right. what it is. Five, and, six, and seven. Yeah, and I had right? four. Was that, was that, I had was that variable? So I had eight points. I had eight points. Yeah, that's a variable. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh, that was yeah. even the worst. Everybody else has ended early, and you wanted you were begging for that thing to end early, and instead it kept dragging on. So that no, probably I was wanted another it issue. To keep going. Okay, because he was able to to get those points, and I don't remember what I. I think I pulled my three point idol. Yeah. Oh, on uh, on uh, turn four. Yeah. So or end of turn three. I, and I pulled the far one because I had the gun line on the left. I didn't want him to run everything over. I wanted to try and keep it separated. Oh, yeah, you had um, four turns. Okay, 10 to 9 is not unusual now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. Because you reset the points on four. So you I had think four, five, six, and seven. That was four turns of yeah. scoring. So it was, it was actually 9 to 8. Okay. Um. So I had I had the one token left. Itagawa died. Which he would have been able, I would have been able to walk um, Hanzo or Hero over to the three point idol and pray. Mm-hmm. Instead, because he died, Coda was able to engage and I just couldn't do anything. He had enough activations um, to tie me up and that was game. So it, it was very close. Like I, I have zero complaints other than the, the removing of the idol, but now I know. So yeah, I think that's one of those. And I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, when I was picking the scenarios, I was trying to pick those that were, that were changed. Um, and would throw off the veteran players, which then somewhat evens. I can't say it evens the playing field, but it, it, it if it's a new scenario, new ish or a new scenario, no new tweak to the scenario, newer players are almost on the same level as veteran players. Yeah. So that, that, that was kind of my mindset when I was choosing those. Um, all right. 
so that that was your experiences, and that dropped you then to third place. Yeah, that took me to third place. So, um, yeah. So uh, I mean, still a great showing for me, not having any plans. Like, yeah, I didn't get paired up against any of like the absolute nightmare matchups, like um, Breath of Ure or anything like that. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't say any of my matchups were easy by any means, except mine. Yeah, it still wasn't easy. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, this is it's roses. I don't really care. That one mentally plus, dam- the, plus the damage dice just didn't weren't showing up, so it's all good. Your normal Jason dice were not Jasoning. No, they weren't. But it was still a very stressful match because you Jason. never you never knew when the dice were going to go or Jason was going to pull some dumbass well, silver plus. <laughs> plus, I think in in the world of Bushido, I don't think I've ever lost a tournament game to Jason. I think we've tied once. I think but so. I think, possible. I think tournament-wise, I've never lost against Jason. So there's always that in the back of the head. That I, oh, I, don't, care. I, I don't even care about that. I'm just like, I all know. right, well, I'm just going to play this. And eventually something's just going to set Cody off one way or the other. I'm going <laughs> to hit that right moment there. And it's just going to be like, oh, there we go. man. hey, look, I it got something been, here. Yeah. I got momentum. You almost had it. So uh, the pictures that are flying through are the are the entries for the um, for the painting competition. You're going to notice that there's probably some differences in numbers of the cards for the participants. Um, I don't know if our judge took pictures of everything, um, and then I don't. I also think that some people thought that they were going to go into the painting competition, and then when it came up to lunch, they just wanted to go and get lunch and didn't put their stuff out. Uh, so just kind of be aware. So. That that was kind of your two experiences, and I and that was a nice nice going over things of of what you went through and who you faced and so on. Let's talk uh, somewhat briefly about your uh, just general impressions and things. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna be the first one because I'm gonna go for the low hanging fruit on this one. So in 2022, the big thing for the North American Grandmasters was the rise of Savage Wave and like five Oni lists that year. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, it was Kinchi. Well, and last year was Temple. Le- well, Temple, Temple's always, Temple's always there. Yeah, yeah that, well, that's well, not a surprise. But well, last <laughs> year, there was a lot of Temple and there was a lot of uh, Silver Moon, I believe. Well, Silver Moon's always an outlier because it is everybody that plays a Ronin list plays it as Silver Moon. Yeah, but still, there's as a faction, declared faction, there's still a lot. There's very few that play them more, pure. More than this year. This, this year, year, this year uh, there were two. There were. Th- I'd have to go. You know, I'd have, you know, make yeah, me pull I mean, up Longshanks. Really, you no, do that to me? no, no. I, there was every single faction was represented except for Joan. Which I was actually kind of surprised about. I was surprised, and yeah, um, it was a nice spread. We even had at least. Do we have two? Oh, I'm gonna go to Longshanks now. Well, I, I know talking. for a fact there was only two Temple players. Thank you, everyone that played something other than Temple. Um, <laughs> <laughs> only joking. I thought there were. No, here we go. Keep going. Keep going. I, I'm pretty sure there was only two. Um, I could be wrong, but it, for the most part, there was like two or three of just about everything. There was one ninja. And I don't. There's one other faction that only had a one-off, and I don't remember who it was. That was Dissension. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. Dissension and ninjas were one-off, and then, like I said, it was like two or three of everything. I don't think there was any like that ran away with it like previous years, because I think even last year there was like five or six Minimoto players, me mm-hmm. being one of them. Um. So it, it was kind of nice playing, knowing that you're not going to necessarily go into a mirror match or play the same faction over and over and over again. Unless you play Kinchi. So here's the here's yeah, the official breakdown of it. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can uh, see if I can put this over there. And I'm going to share the screen now. Uh, let's see if I can stop sharing. And then we're going to share again. Maybe. Working on it. There we go. So here's the breakdown of it. Uh, five Kenshi, which was the most populous. I will also say I was very surprised that we had four Ryu. And of those Ryu, I think three of them were Crit Strike Lease. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I was the only gun line. Yeah, and and for those of you that maybe are going to be watching uh, my 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 videos on Adepticon experiences, uh, I mentioned that Cody. As I'm going through with the video camera, I'm like, oh, and Cody's playing a crit strike list. That that's wrong. Uh, he was playing a gun line. Um, yeah, yeah, it kind of was a crit strike, though. He I mean, had I, hero. You had a crit strike figure, but I, not every figure. Get, a crit strike. How many did I get off? I got three crit strikes off. Damn. Yeah. One of them against me. <laughs> yeah. One I mean, there were some people who had three crit strikes in one match. <laughs> well, yeah, I let my opponent have two. His die was definitely cocked, and I was, I was like, I have the three. I'm like, we're just gonna call that a crit strike because it was funny. And then the very next attack, he crit struck a, another model, and it was on the zero with snake eyes. I was like, this is beautiful. <laughs> The best one to get. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> one to zero with snake eyes. That's... And I think my Ashigaru were tough that turn too. So it was even better. It was just like, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a beautiful moment. I love it. So, all right. So there were five Kenshi, four Ryu, then three Cult, three Silver Moon, of which I could say only one of them would be considered pure Silver Moon, uh, three Minimoto. Three Ito, so I like that. That's a nice spread there. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Two Temple, which both were Inari, so there mm-hmm. were no Temple Monks. Uh, two Savage Wave, both Oni. One Dissension, one Shiho, and one um, one yeah, yeah. Shadow Wind. And like I said, no Jung, which again is a surprise, but that's uh, uh, you know I I I think that's a nice spread. I I like seeing that middle group there. Would I like to? I thought we might have seen, and and I'll be honest. So this year we were at twenty eight players. Um, mm-hmm. We did have four that dropped out. I will say last minute that probably would have that under other circumstances they would have been there. Two of them dropped out due to COVID. One dropped out because they had a work emergency that they had to go and deal with that day. And I think the, oh, and then uh, uh, Andy Palmer. And yeah, he, uh, dropped GCT. Because... he dropped out because he couldn't talk. Literally, could not talk. Yeah. He just needs I, to be in a plastic a bubble were... every time he comes to the states because this is the second time this has happened. Just... No, 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 no. He didn't get sick last time, but I don't want. But he about... lost his I... voice. He didn't lose. Or, oh, he didn't right. lose, he lose his voice his last voice. time. I'm not going to say why yeah. he wasn't able oh, to play right. in 2022. Right. It's humorous. <laughs> I remember <laughs> but... now. Never mind. You're right. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a couple others that were registered that then unregistered whatever yeah we had a couple we had reasons. two we had a couple that were registered that unregistered but but if we would have had that four we would have had four more players we would have had another cult we would have had mini moto i have no idea what uh what what my businessman was going to be playing probably ryu um and then who was the last guy pretty sure Joan. It was going to be. Well, wasn't it Andy? That was the fourth one. Andy, was Andy, oh, Andy, Ito. Andy was Ito, yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, then there, then there were a couple others, and I don't know what they were going to play. But uh, either way. So, yeah, Kenshi was the big thing for me. That, uh, that was the big surprise. That was kind of surprising. I didn't want to go up against Kenshi um, because a lot of them have natural range defense one. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think I would have done okay. Um, I think you would have done fine. It was I mean, just more of... Like, I know what Kenshi do. I've played them a bunch. I've played against them a bunch. It's just... We don't play them that often in we our don't play them. So. That, yeah, that's that's the trick. And they were playing... I, I don't think any of... I think only one of them played the version where they had... Where it was the Ronin version. That's no, the one people, that I wanted to play against. Two people and, played that. I played against one of the people that had that one. Okay, and they didn't. And nobody played Tenbatsu. No, he's no. too expensive. Yeah, um, but I, I think he would have done fine. The other, I will say, the other surprising thing, and and I kind of mentioned it was is uh, for Ryu lists. Yeah, I I will say for newer players, beginning players, one Ryu is a fairly good faction to take, and two, playing the crit strike list. Means that you are always, a th- if you're playing every figure could crit strike for crit strike zero, every figure you have on the board potentially could wipe you out in one shot. Right. 
So it always means you're competitive. Yeah. And I know one of the players, at least the last how many ever years, because even pre-COVID, he -hmm. played crit strike Ryu. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I know that there's always going to be one. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I... I don't know what I'm going to play next year. We'll see. (laughs) Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing what I'm going to play. I'll tell you what it's going to be. Ito. 2025 is the year of Ito. It is. I believe it is the year of the snake. This year is the year of the dragon. So I was really trying. I don't know. I'm I'm either going to Ito it up or. (laughs) Now you're going to do your master's list. Because how are you able to do your master's model? Because our model should be legal. So that let's. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) Let's talk master's model, gentlemen. That was a, that was a big thing. Yeah, but we don't want thing. Temple to win again. I mean, that's a given. But I mean, if you're going to win with your master's model, at least like may as well be here in the states before the Europeans win with it. Well, yeah, but we've got a year. They've got 17 tournaments over there that they can win with it. Three. <laughs> Let's no. be serious, gentlemen. Three. I didn't say 17. I did. I just I said did. Europe could win. I was just saying we got to win here first. So we're going to start with Jason. Yeah, I wasn't also expecting them to sell it. I just was hope, thinking, oh, cool, I'm going to get my model and it's all good to go. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, look, there's an entire sleeve of my model. There's like, oh, shit. And that's the same thing with Cody's. Like, I know, I think through my thing, they sold, they had to sell a crap ton of figures because every time I went there, it was either like, down it got to the point where they just started filling in like two sleeves worth of empty spots to fill the space with my figure i'm like shit this thing's selling like crazy apparently it was well i don't know i didn't pay for it i know you didn't pay for it (laughs) one would think that if you help create your own figure that they would let you have the figure for free no 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 no, no, cody didn't pay for didn't pay for my figure he just like no i'm not paying for this i told them that i will put it in my pile and i will not pay for it they're like well you bought four (laughs) things the the fifth is free or whatever some booth special i was like yeah well i guess that's okay then (laughs) (laughs) is the principle apparently i think you should i think you should play silver moon next year cody that's that's the challenge that's the the challenge both of you play each other's grandmaster figures Oh. In a list, so Jason would play Temple. You would play Silver Moon. I don't know how Cody feels about that. I think Cody thinks he's getting the short end of the stick with my model. I 100 percent feel that way, but we'll see. Ooh, we'll have to. We'll have to. You know what? That will be. Well, at least do a battle be, report about it. That's I was gonna say. That could be. That will be a spectacular battle report. So that means I got to paint Silver Moon though, and and I know that. So painter. I will think. Uh, you know uh, the paint jobs here, uh, Headley. He did a spectacular job on painting those. Thank you. For yeah. That. Thank oh, you, Headley. Yeah. They are absolutely gorgeous. So that was that is Jason's. <laughs> who is this? Is it Kenichi? Kenichi Gemu. Kenichi Gemu. Well, originally he was just supposed to be Kenichi, but then they added the Gemu at the end. Of it. I was like, why? What, why did they add Gemu? And then I look it up as like gaming. I'm like, okay, I guess that 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 works too. <laughs> So he that is. was that was uh, that was GCT or whoever. That yeah, I, I like there. that though. That that's that's a nice shout out to uh, yeah. your to your channel. social media and the channel and all the rest of that. Lord knows we need all the help we could get. Uh, so he is a crime boss swordsman. He makes people good and kicks ass. Yeah, oh, he makes the Kodai or he makes the shite better actually with the new with that new box that dropped looking at the, the ones that can go into silver moon i'm like ooh, wow that um that gets very tasty very quickly so the new yeah. the new kabuki guys can actually fight with them because they're shite they're kabuki and shite and they're and they're disgusting and they're <laughs> well there's that too um but a lot of them i think the only, there's only one model that's restricted to a thousand names and that's the ringmaster which after reading his card oh, i understand why uh, he i think is. The, i think the budo is too oh and budo I yeah pray the, pray the budo is yeah budo, budo here, is. i've got this card here Hang so on. they did it just like with the anari there's one figure that could all and and they did that with the anari they did that with the wolves that you have to play the specific theme for the box for that one figure which i like i like that idea that's, yeah i don't good. hate that I, I do like that yeah uh no actually hang on oh jason's looking at everything now no fudo is not restricted fudo is not restricted but it's uh his, his, name is ludo. his the buto he's the buto ludo the buto fudo the buto so it's, but it's uh ludo, it's his... ludo from the labyrinth right 
but it's his uh his no. nasty key feet signal Ludo's from Popeye. <laughs> it's signal and his, all of his key abilities are what are kind of res they're restricted to Kabuki. So if you're uh, well, if you're not playing the labyrinth, who it's the giant furry guy with horns? I don't know. Furry Ludo. guy? No. Oh, Ludo. Okay. I'm also thinking I, I'm old, so I said Popeye. Bluto yeah. is Popeye's enemy. But um no, so Fudo's old. not restricted, but his key abilities, they only work well with Kabuki. So I mean he all of a sudden becomes very interesting in Iron Fist now because there's a good number of the item there's pretty much everybody here could be taken into Iron Fist except for the Gaijin, I think. Gaijin and Kokai, because Kokai is restricted and Gaijin it has a ranged weapon. There you go. So that is Jason's uh, figure only for the Kabuki. So gorgeous! I love the I love the tattoo work here yeah. on the chest on his six pack abs, which I'll never understand and or never achieve. Uh but it's a it's a gorgeous model, and it's it's such a casual pose that I like it a lot. I the more I look at it, the more I like it. Mm -hmm. At first, I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. It's another guy, you know, mm -hmm. but. They did such a good job with it, with making it passive yet dynamic at the same time. It's, that was the it, idea, at least. It's very subtle. It's very yeah. subtle. Yeah. It would have been cool if they could have gotten the Yakitori stick in there, but that wasn't going to happen. That was not going to happen. <laughs> you could add one if you want. That's basically what I told them when I think Gordon emailed me. He's like, we're going to try, but we, we probably aren't going to be able to do it. Like, that, that's fine. That's like yeah, asking too much because that's just a nightmare than trying to get that in there. So if people want to do it, they can get a splinter and glue it in there. Try to do that if they're even going to try it at all. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is Jason's. Now, if I go in the right direction here, there. Ooh. So beautiful. Again, gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> Listen, I only broke the first one. Yeah. So it, uh, if we were listening to Arashi's fanboy with Headley talking about painting it, yeah, he kind of broke the first one, the necklace yeah. there. Um, I snapped but, it right in half, and then I had to have them send me another. But it's, uh, again, fabulous paint job. I love the basing on that, too. And the pose on it is just really, really cool. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, I know the original artwork that I received had a tactical log. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been I'm such a child. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna step away. I have to go check my. I gotta go drop a tactical log. <laughs> tactical log. Um, no, it would have been amazing with that. But I, I totally love the sculpt, and um, they did make some of the features a little bit more subtle. So it's got that female look to it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how the model turned out. And for those who are struggling with pronunciation, it's Thank Master Charlin. Charlin, yes. Charlin. Not Charlene. Charlin. Right. Uh, and official now. Yeah, and the the reason for the name is I named it after my daughter. And um, yeah, she wasn't born yet, but you know, I thought it was a cool little tribute, so her name sure than me. <laughs> Mine was just, I'm going to try to make it as close as I can to Ken. And then it turned into me like Google searching the Yakuza for like three hours. And I had to erase my internet history set with the FBI didn't come after me. Yeah. Nope. I didn't do that. I just watched Kung Fu Panda and I was like, Hmm, child Kung Fu Panda. There we go. We got a model and named after my kid. Can't go wrong with it. It's it, it's a good model too. I think it's gonna. It, like I said, I really think it'll be interesting if we do a battle report, and hopefully we'll get that in the near future. You know, of uh, of each of you, and again, paint up your stuff. But it would be interesting if Jason played you. You know, played your grandmaster, and you played Jason's grandmaster. That would yeah, be. Can, it. We I mean, we could do it both ways that. too. But yeah, that's yeah. what we kind of need to do. Well, I gotta wait for my. I gotta wait for my guy to come back because I sent him up to Canada to get painted. So that's where all good painting takes place in Canada. Oh, nice. Flavor. <laughs> It's the one time I'm actually using a painter because I was like, hey, I'd like this to actually look well. Look He's going to well. enter it's every competition. Your, your friend who lives, you know, an hour away. <clears throat> you, 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 cost, you, did, you cost too you, much. You would have just looked at it and been like, oh, no, it ended up in the garbage disposal. I don't know how that happened. 
<laughs> it looks like you'll have to wait for general release now. No, looks if like... you paid me, I would definitely paint it. Uh... Oh no, it got painted and then lost in the garbage disposal. You'll have to wait till it comes out for general release. Or, I'm so go. sorry, Jason. I didn't like how it looks, so I green stuffed it so many times, all the details gone. Now it's just a blob. So let's talk about. Uh, so that was our experiences, and that pretty much uh, sums up my stuff. Cody, why don't you tell us about your Saturday, however, because uh, what, what most people third? don't realize how much we didn't even talk about your Thursday with your moonstone. How'd your Thursday moonstone go? Well, it didn't put me in the hospital this did not year. Put you in the ho and I did not have to go to the emergency room. Right. I, pre I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I had an absolute blast playing Moonstone. Um, I think that was f four rounds. The, you um, guys were done quick. Because, I yeah, mean, four were. rounds for us dragged on till 7, 8 o'clock at night. You guys were done by s before 5. Yeah, but you got to remember, Moonstone's only four turns. That is true, and it goes kind of quick. Yeah, if you have two people that know what they're doing, it's it's a quick and game. Was it five models or six models? Five. So I think that so helps. That helps. That helps speed it up a little bit too. Yeah. Um. So I played a list that I called, which is what was it? Which is trees and bunnies? Oh my! So it was literally just the Lesh of Alt Witches, some big tree dudes, and Boris the Bunny Summoner. Okay. Had no idea what I was doing. Oh, I played Eric the on the giant stag too. Um, okay. So I I think it was four rounds. I went three and one. Uh, I ended up taking third place somehow. Nice. Um <laughs> I got best in faction. So that was kind of cool, considering I'd never played half of those models before. <laughs> um, and yeah, just every single game was really tight, except for the one that I played against my friend, who I got paired up in round two, who had never played the game before. So I taught him a little lesson on uh, <laughs> how to <laughs> not suck. <laughs> There's seven Moonstones. I had six of them, and I almost got the seventh. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. But yeah, so that was really good. Um, I I helped paint a lot of terrain for that, and yes. I sponsored with some prize support. Um, you know, I, I rebranded my my Instagram, so I'm now Brushel Sprout. Yes, I saw. And uh, so that was kind of nice, just getting a little recognition from that. And then, um, <laughs> in between rounds, I was running around putting all my painting pieces, competition pieces in the different competitions. <laughs> I had all my free blades display and diorama sitting at the end of the table waiting because I kept breaking it. So I was like repairing stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that was Thursday. Great yeah. day. Just a lot of fun. Another not stressful tournament. Um, it, it, it's nice just getting you in the gaming mindset. Yeah, uh, and, and, and Moonstone. Not that Moonstone is not competitive; it can be competitive. Uh, I like I like the format of it is very same because you're trying to get the Moonstones. Doctor Dice does a great job running it. Yeah, you know. So congrats to him. That was that was a good experience. Um, you know, so everything that I saw, and that's one of those things. So had I not been doing the open play, or I was able to jump free of the open play, I was a hundred percent going to be in that tournament. Mm -hmm. um, so. We'll see if I'm able to get into that next year. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it, that one. Uh, you can't go wrong with that one. That was what 16 people. Yeah, it was 16. We had a ton on the wait list, but yeah, I think um, it's hard to. Yeah, there's some if you don't issues. have a dedicated group that will eat, you know, that can drag in like one or two more boards. Well, we. We could have probably done a couple more. They would have been a little lackluster, but I have enough 2D terrain that I could have put out at least one more board. But um, there's some other stuff that we won't get into about that. But uh, I think next year we'll probably be able to expand that to at least 20. Yeah. Well, I know I'll probably definitely be able to add a board on that and do some, do some things for it. So, uh, yeah. you know, that'll be... 20 more players, four more players in there, and who knows? I don't know if Dr. Dice is going to do it again or if somebody else will, but maybe they'll run two days' worth of events. Who knows? I, I at least think the Thursday will be uh, Dr. Dice with assistance of Josh. Not Bushido Josh, but my Josh. Other Josh. 
Yeah. Do, do we have an official title for that, Josh? Stoner Josh. Stoner Josh. Stoner I like Josh. Stoner Josh. Yeah. So Stoner uh, Josh will be helping. Yeah. He's basically going to run long shanks, and that way Dr. Dice can do Dr. Dice things. And he doesn't stress out about long shanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would help, but I want to play, and, you know, I'm selfish, so. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, That's if fine. I'm not dragged down by demos, I could help. Uh, again it's if i play but I we know. we totally got uh, there was there was no way to expect what we expected so yeah. moonstone thumbs up oh yeah and also if you're going to run a tournament run moonstone there's no board flipping <laughs> true set the table and then it's there you go here we go uh, no well, unless you decide to do a narrative event or something that like that true. which i think could be fun too so, so yeah, Moonstone, great, took third place. Bushido, fantastic, took third place. Obviously, I've seen the like to win, but yeah, I was like, all right, third place it is this year. Free Blades. <laughs> Free Blades. So, this is Cody Saturday. Saturday, yes. Saturday, Saturday. Oh, so, Saturday. never mind. Um, my my first round in this one, I got paired up against someone that I played at a, a Michigan tournament that I went to, and I got utterly destroyed. Um, so I'm starting this game out kind of like, great, this is going to go well. And my brother-in-law shows up to watch, and the game's <laughs> over in 15 minutes. I just utterly destroyed my opponent. Uh, oh, wow. So it was yeah, I was, I was there, expecting huh? you to say, like, I got utterly destroyed, and he's just like, so I came all the way just to see this? Bye. No, the, the dice were just in my favor, and we had a lunch break scheduled after the first round. Yeah, that was so, a little weird, but I get it, I get it. So... We started at 9, a little bit after 9, but it was like 9.15. I think I was done by 9.40. Oh, jeez. And I didn't have to be back until noon. <laughs> <laughs> so I played against uh, the Freeblades equivalent of Minimoto, basically. Was it the It was the bears. Dwarves. The, okay, it was the Dwarves. Okay. Yeah. That's who you played with, last year, right? With the Bears, yeah. That's who I played against. Right. I played the, the Cannibal Faction. Um. So anyway, so then round two, I played against the exact same list, different player. I ended up beating him. It was a little bit more difficult based on scenario, but mm -hmm. whatever. So I'm like, all right, we're doing great. I'm like, we're going into round three. I'm 2-0. and oh. I get paired up against the probably the equivalent of um, Blue Gale Scouting Party. So and, <laughs> quick, and quick in range. Is it the, was it the Trillions? Yeah. Okay. It was the Trillions. And uh, so the Cannibals, the Tribes of Ruin, I, I would say they're kind of like Prefixture of Ryu. Okay. They, can, they can hit, they can take a hit, but they also have some shenanigans as well with like the Ashigaru kind of. And dogs. I had a lot of dogs. Okay. So Prefixture. Um, I couldn't roll damage to save my life. <laughs> I need to roll anything but a one, basically. Mm-hmm on anything from a d6 to a d10 and all i could do is roll ones on damage if i would have even gotten two damage rolls i would have won the game in like three turns so a lot of tarches yeah so for th for those of you who aren't familiar with the um with the nomenclature for free booters free booters when you roll a one which would be like or a critical miss it's a tarch when you roll a critical hit it explodes so you get to roll again mm -hmm. and that's called a spike because you could keep taking it up, 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 yeah. Uh, every time you roll, That's you know the sure. max. And then they have the dice. You know, not only do you have a d10, d12, d20, but you have it a goes from d4 to d100. And every two, or, sorry, so not d100, d4 to d30, d30 with going d12, d14, d16, d18, d20, blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, there, there's odds in there now. Yeah. Yeah. I have a I have a D nine and a D eleven, I believe. Okay, I thought those were special dice, though. Those sure. are special dice. That's the reason oh, well, why I buy the fucking forty dollar well, dice pack that they sell. No, well, it's, it's no. for um, relic cards because, like, my thought. so you build your your free band, and then when you play in campaigns or tournaments, you get a relic card at the end. Mm -hmm. Um. So I have it, one. Yeah. yeah, it's a piece of equipment. They all do different stuff. They have a die value to them, but that's the only way you can get them. So that's why the the weird oddball dice. So yeah, but, to to explain free blades more, free blades I, I, again. You have you have the the dice mechanic and whatnot. It's very aside from being competitive. Uh, yeah, I would say it's very 
narrative. It's very, the scenarios are not restricted by map. So one of my, one of my gripes with Bushido is, is the map is so small and because of the way the scenarios are structured in the space and you have to have for tournaments, you don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of space to do cool stuff. Right. Um, if you watch some of the videos that I take going around the hall, the boards for freebooters were, especially the two that were on the end aisle as you're walking down the main aisle to go <sighs> towards the GW booth. Those things were freaking awesome. That the docks, beautiful the Coliseum, unplayable. Really? Yeah, that was the first one that I played on. Was the docks and okay. literally the everything was right in the middle of choke point. I had a couple oh. things that were able to flank around, but especially the scenario that I played in that one, it was okay. um, basically capture the flag. Mm -hmm. And so you want to get to their flag, bring it back. You don't actually have to bring it back. You just have to make sure there's no enemies there. But okay. it, it, yeah, it just was like, all right, well, I'm going to play to break you. So instead of wiping them off the board, you take the total amount of wounds divided by two. And then if you hit that threshold, you're broken. Game ends. Mm. Um, so that was how I won the two games. That's how I was planning, planning on winning the third game. Um, <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> it happens. And then that was a three-round tournament because they do a cut to the final yeah. top four. Yeah. Okay. And um, so that was disappointing because I thought it was a four-round. But how many How many players did they have for that? I don't remember. I, I was keep it, getting was it mixed 30? numbers. It was... Somewhere between 28 and 30. I thought it was really? 30. And they top, sure it just top four? That's kind of weird. Yeah. They, I think really they would like, top cut to top eight on with 30 players. Yeah, but they're running on Sunday, so they want to clear out. Yeah. Well, and just do single bracket elimination at that point, then. Usually, though, like, the top four is pretty well determined by that point. Like, this year, and, and I understand why it was three rounds, is we had four three and O's. Uh, so, that, yeah, then yeah, you're not going to get any better than that. Uh, yeah. It's just going to muck up the standings if you go with that fourth right. round. So that it, I totally understand. And then, um, yeah, top cut to Sunday, single elimination, away you go. And yeah. uh, so hopefully next year. But they do a lot of painting competitions. So um, both my friends that came up, one from Atlanta, which is Stoner Josh, and then my friend Travis um, from South Carolina, both entered models into the uh, base category. Okay. And then I was in like the masters category. So I entered single model, diorama, free band, and display board. And then they had a player's choice, which was new for this year. Mm -hmm. Um. So I took gold in player's choice, single model, and diorama, and then silver in display board and free band. Okay. And then <laughs> Josh's friend actually painted the model, so he gave him credit, and he took gold, and then Travis took silver. <laughs> uh, well, that's good, though, you know. Yeah, and then that was all I got for painting awards was from... Uh, free blades mm -hmm. i got a lot of great feedback from privateer press on my model um and learned a couple things so okay. con lighting is natural lighting so if you're gonna paint for a convention don't paint under bright lights it'll mess up your highlights and shadows mm. <laughs> okay wouldn't have thought that but yeah i i always, especially when i go to stores and i'm at cons i always like looking at my figures then yeah because the, the it, it it looks different and it's usually better yeah and that's yeah. like sometimes when you're painting under the bright lights you you push it and then it's washed out basically mm -hmm. when you get to the the con or whatever so okay. i was like oh that was a good little, little that tip. is a good tip yeah for sure oh. After I spent ninety dollars on a new light, <laughs> a new light. <laughs> no. To, so basically, I've been doing it right in the crappy ass lighting in the, been, in my been, place here or downstairs. Great. Huh? That's so. That's why my shit looks really good because I have the crappy light too in my yeah. I'm in the man cave studio here. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting in the dungeon. I just have bright lights because I can't see. Well, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a good thing. Uh, so that was your Saturday. So Free Blades was good. And again, if if you haven't experienced Free Blades, I I would highly recommend it. Oh, yeah. uh, Game of Life has tried it. It's not necessarily my cup of tea, but it, it it's still a good game. It's, it's I think solid. it's eh, I'm the couple it's games that I played with it. Game. I just it, I think I'd enjoy it as like a campaign style game, but like as a pickup one off, like what we do normally, like week in and week out. Unless if you build a campaign around it, I can't enjoy it. I would maybe yeah. think about doing the campaign style, like when they would talk about it at the store. But yeah, that 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 would be about the only thing that would interest me. Otherwise, it's a it's a solid pass for me as like a pick up and play thing. What I really like about Free Blades and just in general, like the the community for Free Blades is one of the best that I've ever been a part of. They're very good. Um. The staff are fantastic as well. Like, I made a stupid model. You can go on my Instagram to check it out. It's a lizard person that I took Baichi's backpack and a Koji's pack monkey. And I put it on this this lizard person. And in the game, the lizard person's name is Gora. G-O-R-A. So it is now Gora the Explorer. <laughs> so I did it as a meme. And it now resides at DGS's headquarters. Um, they are writing it into their fluff as an NPC for the role-playing game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they even mm -hmm. comped me a model so I can expand on the universe and make Swiper. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, cool. so, yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, uh, and I will say, I've met, I've met the owners and, and, and the people there. They've come out for a local tournament uh, a couple times. So they, they get uh, they get around, and uh, yeah. they're just a great group of people. And the, the guy who kind of really organizes in our meta, Art, uh, you can't meet a better guy. You yeah. Know, he's, he's spectacular. And that's what I really like, especially because they're a stateside company you know mm -hmm. they're, they're based here in the u.s so it, US. it's nice that we're we've got that local company but i also love the cons because like getting to talk with um gordon and andy and everyone else from gct that comes over and mm -hmm. it, just all the companies in general you know i've got i've got my favorites wild in the streets that i always go hit up and well, talk to but we'll we'll, yeah. we'll get to that in a moment uh which when we talk about our shopping oh shopping uh so uh that leaves just me because i it sounds like i'm the only person who did an event on sunday um so like i said saturday night i was supposed to play uh drowned earth in the afternoon like around nine ish um and then i was doing a narrative drowned earth in the evening uh i was uh, I got to bed sometime close to one on Saturday night, on Friday night or Saturday morning, if you want to call it that. I was wiped. I think I slept until nine, <laughs> and I, I even told I even told uh, because um, uh, I, I know the judge who was running the event and whatnot. I'm like I'm not making it, and he's 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 looking at me afterwards and hearing me, and he's like, no, I get it. <laughs> And, and so I, I, I wandered into the con around noon. I was able to do a little bit of shopping, which I'll talk about after that in a little bit. But and that was honestly the first time I actually got to experience the hall. And I really didn't do a thorough going through. I didn't get to do all the demos I would like to have done and all the rest of that just because I was so blitzed on Saturday. And then I was still blitzed in the evening. So I didn't do that. And then, I, like I said, we just played Cyberpunk. So Sunday comes around. I'm better. I play in cyberpunk. I, I was supposed to be in Leviathans. Didn't get into that. I didn't do the Star Trek thing. I'm glad I played cyberpunk. Cyberpunk's a great game. Uh, Monster Fight Club, uh, cyberpunk. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of always like that. It's 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 what I would love Infinity to be. Uh, although Infinity people will probably take a little a little bit of. Uh, they are offended by that. Slightly. They might be a little offended by it. The rule the, the rule system for for cyberpunk is 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 nice it's elegant it's smooth it has it has things that i like which is resource management and just and just in good fluid movement mechanics and just gameplay in general uh there's synergies that you could build on things so if you like doing your list building that does have some elements of that and it does have things that you could buy and add so it's very you could play a good campaign with it 
Um, so it, it, it clicks all the boxes for me. Um, so we played, it was a three round tournament because it's a Sunday and the rounds go quick. So that's the other trick. Most of the games, a game really didn't go more than an hour of, of cyberpunk. And I think everybody got to play to the finish. Uh, cause we started, started around 10, 10 30 and we were done before we were done at two 30. Um, yeah, so it, it was quick. Um, I, I thought I went 3-0, but I, I didn't. I, I went 2-0, so I came in third or fourth. Uh, I got to play zone. I played a zoner uh, gang with my Street King. And then the first round, I played... Who did I play? I didn't play Ar I didn't play against Arasaka, or did I? Oh, no, Arasaka was my last round against Dr. Dice. Second round was against... Uh, not Danger Girls. Danger Girls was first round because I was against Travis. Second round was against was against actually a Bushido player. Um, do, 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 do. Net runners. Play? No, no, net runner. He didn't play uh, edge runners. He played. Did he play? No, he didn't play Danger Girls. I already said that. Uh, oh no, he played uh, Maelstrom. Uh, the Cybered Out dudes. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I did well against uh, the whole thing, and it was fun. It was great. I actually won a prize for it. I got a, I got a Maelstrom gang. So, yay, now I have three gangs. Ooh. Um, anytime I don't have to spend money for something is good in gaming Greg's book. So that was fun, and I had a little bit of time to go and walk the hall, uh, which, um, which takes us now to the most important thing about Adepticon, the shopping. No. So, we'll start with gaming Jason, the yeah, he the most me. frugal of gamers. Yep. What was on your shopping list? We'll end with Cody because Cody is the uh, least frugal. So the only thing that was really on my shopping list was uh was the Path of a Thousand Names and Fudo okay. um from Bushido. Um I I had heard about the I think Dr. Dice had talked to us about the Modifius, like the new subset for, uh, or that their new skirmish oh, type fan for Fallout factions. Yeah, yeah. That I was thinking maybe I'd get a chance to go over there and look at it and see if I liked it, but apparently it sold out, so I didn't even get a chance to go over there because I didn't know where they were. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. The only other thing that I might have been interested in was like Warcrow, maybe, but mm -hmm. they didn't have anything there for that. Well, they had two, they had demos. Uh, um, well, I, but they didn't have product to buy, which no, then again, no, no, that would have been. It's not out yet. Yeah, so. The only other thing that I think that would have been actually interesting to make a purchase wasn't even like a miniature thing. It was more of and well, the in, in the main hall there was a they had the GW store and they had a Gene Steeler action figure and I just wanted to get that, but I was just like, eh, I, I was short on money for this month to pick it up, so that's why I just didn't even think about it. That's that's fine. <laughs> but those were pretty much the only things that I picked up really. Besides, again, there might have been some other things here and there, he's but tallying all his numbers in his head. My uh. <laughs> My budget was pretty much already. I had left just enough room in the budget, and I still had to make some adjustments. Ugh, um, B word. To, uh, He's so responsible. To get that, and then I guess I spent. I guess I sent the. Uh, I paid for the painting services for Kenny. Oh, there you go. Done. So I guess that's that would be there. part of my Adepticon shop. That's that? good. Yeah. Nice. That'll be awesome. Yeah. So. So that's the only reason why I didn't go with you, Cody, was is that 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 that's who I'm sending it off is with. Oh uh, yeah. No, I, I would send stuff to him too. He's better than me. I just be giving me <laughs> crap. <laughs> so he won't lose it down a garbage disposal twice because I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I don't even have you. a garbage disposal. Uh, yeah. Well, you on the ejector disposal. pad. <laughs> it goes, goes in the mulcher. Uh, I'm in the fireplace that you recently discovered behind the wall in your basement. Yeah, you know. uh, I haven't turned that down yet. The congratulations! It just turned on, and oh, somehow your model ended up in there. I thought it was a, oh. I thought it was a fire starter. It was christening it. Yeah. Uh, no, so, christening it with burning wasapu or my privacy or press dice. Yeah, all of the above, <laughs> both, both of which. So my shopping experience or going through the vendor hall was very limited. Uh, like I said, I I didn't. I, st I actually spent probably more time in the hall on Wednesday as GCT was setting up their booth than I spent on Thursday and Friday combined. Uh, I mean, that makes so, sense. That, yeah, that it makes sense. It, it, it was it was wall-to-wall -wall people when I got there. So Saturday, I probably could have spent the most time there, but I was so... Bleh, I just... I wandered. I kind of looked at a few things. I made sure I saw some stuff, but I really didn't 
spend a whole lot of time. I, I didn't get to the Black Sight Studios to kind of take a look at them. I didn't get to TT Combat till Sunday. So uh, the big thing that I got for shopping wise is I had I had basically let me take a peek back there. Two big purchases. One of them is is I because GCT said, hey, if you're going to order something from the website, you get the free shipping and we'll bring it to the con. I abused the hell out of that and bought like a hundred bucks or more of, of GCT figures. A lot of it was Imperials. A lot of it was Ito stuff that I wanted to get back. The only thing I should have done is I should have gotten, but I couldn't do it is they didn't have online the new Imperial model. Uh, Jason has the one that he won and I'm painting that one up, uh, but I wanted the other one. So that did way I would have the, or did they, I didn't did they get there in time. It? They no. didn't, they had it early, but again, I didn't get, I actually didn't go shopping in the GCT booth or even check on it until Sunday. No. And as you know, as you saw some of the pictures, they had a whole bunch of different cards saying sold out, sold out, sold out. Yeah. They sold out of the really cool stuff pretty damn fast. No. And that was one of those. Should have told Gordon, he probably would have put one off to the side. Or just I didn't know. I would have picked it up. <clears throat> I totally, I just honestly didn't think about it uh, oh. until, until I walked in the booth on Sunday. I picked it up. Brian picked it up. So, there's well, multiple Brian copies. picked up the oh. alternate because Brian's got the yeah. other one that he that I didn't have, and vice versa. Yeah, but I'm yeah. just saying, like we've got yeah, we've got sets it, if we need to, to yeah. play if people want to play it. Yeah, so that's good. So, but I, I like I said, I got I got a whole boatload of uh, of stuff for for Ito and that. So I got a lot of painting for Bushido to do in my near future. Um, the next big thing that I bought, and then I'll talk about things that I actually got to do a couple demos of or wanted to do demos of or just talk to vendors about. Uh, but the next big thing that I purchased was Blood and Plunder. Oh, you did get it? Sweet. I did get it. I did get the starter. So the the deal was just redonkulous. Oh, yeah. hundred bucks. Uh, was it? It was, like... it was 100 bucks. So okay. it sounds like a lot, but it, you, see the, you see the box back there. Oh, yeah. It's a big, bulky box. It's right a there. big box. It's a big, bulky box. Um, it's... You've got it, yeah. Upside <laughs> down. Upside but down, yeah. but there you go. <laughs> Blood and Plunder. With my head for scale. Two players. You get two boat. So here's the kicker with it. Not only do you get a boatload of sprues to make figures with, but you get you get two boats with it too, along with the rule book, tokens, oh, nice. the whole nine yards. And a so, nice paper mat. Yeah. Yeah. You get the mat, a double sided paper mat. So you can do just ocean battle or you get the shore, you know, land with the shoreline on it. So it was uh, you know, it was a deal. Uh, it normally goes for like 140 something That's and they've had it. Yeah. 145. And they've had it as an online deal. So while they were saying it was a con special, take it with a grain of salt. Well, uh, you didn't have to pay for shipping. Cause I oh, didn't yeah, have like, to pay for shipping. Yeah, shipping that box was February. And when it was all said and done with tax title and license fee, mm -hmm. uh, it was going to be like 131. I was yeah. like, screw it. At that point, I'll just pick it up at the con for 145. I don't care. Like, yeah, then I don't have to, deal with it like and yeah that, and nice that was my mindset that was my mindset is is because i it, it, dr dice told me about the deal i said oh you gotta get this deal online blah blah blah, blah. i'm like i gotta wait to the con because more than likely they're gonna do a con deal on it and they did yeah and it was funny because me and dr dice were there at the booth just as they were shutting down on sunday they had one box left wow one box that's impressive they sold yeah. They sold a lot of those two player box sets. Yeah. Um, which that's going to probably be another game that's going to be coming in the near future because, uh, yeah, that's just a lot of painting to do. But so those are my two big purchases. Uh, I was supposed to do a little ninja shopping for, uh, for, for some people. Um, I, I, again, I just didn't get to it. I was supposed to do some shopping for Battletech and whatnot. The good news is, is if I needed to do Battletech shopping and what they wanted, our local stores are awash in BattleTech stuff and oh, the things yeah. they want, so it's easy to get. Um, so yeah, that, that that was it. But the big thing for me is I wanted to do the haul, and I wanted to do and talk to some people. Um, we talked to one guy who was kind of doing. I would almost say it's a game system. They're the guys who do the Gigabots or whatever the Giga Robots, a giant robot game. I don't, oh. I'm getting the name wrong. I've seen um, them for like years. And they've yeah, been, they have a new game coming out that they tried to kickstart that I would say reminds me more of a uh, Giver kind of deal. Uh, Dr. Dice and me, we talked to them a bit about that game. That seemed very interesting. I what We talked with um, 
Oh my gosh, I should remember his name. He's like a legend in the gaming with uh, 40K. But the guys who were doing Xeon Genesis, mm -hmm. uh, which that was a demo I wanted to try. We did it last year on Sunday. I, I would have liked to have done it again just to refresh myself on it, but that's another powered armor or giant robot game that I'm really kind of looking at that I like. Um, so that's going to be in my future there, potentially. Uh, but didn't get to play a demo of it this year. I, I, Whiz Kids, I wanted to play the new Star Trek one that they have. Didn't get to do that because um, Whiz Kids actually Whiz Kids was killing me because Bushido was here. Whiz Kids was right across from it here, the entire con that we were, not the booth, but I mean where we were doing our events. And so I'm watching everybody play it and I'm like, I can't go over there and watch. Um, so I wanted to play a War Crow demo. Wasn't able to do that. Good luck. One, yeah, I know. It was good luck. But So that's something hopefully I'll be able to do in a little bit. Actually, they put out a notice that if you wanted your store to... Was it them that wanted to do the Warcrow? Yeah. If they wanted to have a demo done of Warcrow at your store, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send some things. So hopefully we get a demo kit out at Grognard's Games in Roselle. Um, to be able to Dr. try Dr. Dice is trying to get it too. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Dice is trying to do it. So if he's able to do it, we'll do an unboxing. Cody will paint stuff. Yep. It'll, be, it'll be fabulous. Um, but the one demo I did get that is something that I will be getting is, again, Firelock Games, the people who make Blood and Plunder. They have a Kickstarter coming up in April for Port Royale, kind mm -hmm. of their skirmisher game. Uh, so it's like time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we played that. I liked it. It was fun. So definitely gonna definitely gonna look into doing that. Yep. Uh, and then I oh I forgot I did buy some stuff at Monster Fight Club. I bought a, uh, some uh, river river flats and uh, that you could flip over and be paths. And I bought nice. some uh, gonks for my zoners. Nice. So you know I kept things reasonable. Hmm. Uh, I did not I did not make a stupid purchase like I did in 2023 when I bought into um, War Gods. War Gods. Yeah, Brian. Uh, we, screw Brian. We won't say names. We won't no, say Brian. names. We made a mistake. Hatter on Longshanks. <laughs> we we made a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, like, I don't even I don't even we, remember we that no one. Ever we no longer up. we no longer listen to Brian when it comes to game suggestions. Oh, that yeah. was well, a game suggestions that he wanted. I don't uh, this is like the first time ever hearing of this game. Like because you're that, smart. Okay, I apparently didn't pay attention oh, yeah, or you, whatever. You wouldn't have bought anything anyway. Bought anything. It's, it, it, beautiful models, uh, fun idea and everything, but expensive. And they don't have yeah. everything to play some of the armies. Right. Which oh, is annoying. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, probably. Uh, probably and it is it expensive. Anyways. Um, the one thing that we did demo that me and Dr. Dice were very much waffling on getting, and, and it may have played, and the, the, the Brian factor may have factored into us not getting it was blackout nope not even gonna do it uh luckily i could, I could play blackout every weekend if i wanted to i'm drink yourself go, blackout wait. that's not that's how i blackout. play blackout <laughs> no no <laughs> yes but no um but <clears throat> luckily there's um there's some guys the gray's lake guys uh so for those of you who aren't familiar in the local meta here the chicago area they're they're another suburb of chicago further northwest um, some of them are playing blackout already. Uh, and so they're willing to demo it for me. So I may give it a, I may give it a, a try. I don't know if I'll buy into it, but it sounded interesting. Yeah. We'll see. <clears throat> so that was me. Um, that was my experience. Like I said, I would have liked to have done more demos. I would have liked to, that's the big thing. I would have liked to have done more demos and maybe yeah. next year. That's what I'm going to focus on play an event or two and then just demo the hell out of stuff. Probably doing a month, doing my demos Thursday after I play Moonstone. If I'm playing in Bushido on Friday, Friday's lost. Yeah. And then just have Saturday for demos or Arena Rex. I do miss playing Arena Rex. I miss Walker and the gang. Yeah. I agree. So, Cody, let's get to the big shopping thing because we're going to try to keep this two hours. You're going to take at least 50 minutes to talk about your shopping. <laughs> I could. I probably <laughs> could. So, we'll, we'll try and keep it short, sweet, and to the point. So, okay. he bought everything for me at the con, the end. No, because I didn't buy any sci fi stuff because I'm not big into the sci fi stuff. <clears throat> so, that was easy. I was like, oh, good. We're not getting into sci fi games this year. I should you say could play Cyberpunk with us. Eh, that one I might, but sci fi. That's cheap. 
<laughs> that is cheap. Um, so I didn't even make it into Adepticon, and I had already dropped one thirty or something like that <laughs> because Toledo Game Room, which is the Bits guy, oh, the Bits guy, uh, yeah, they were open. I mean, on Wednesday this before guy getting has everything, mm-hmm. and when I mean everything, everything. Any it's like bit you can it's imagine, like Games Plus. He's got it, and then he has other crap. So he was fire selling Malifo at 50% off. And yeah. we're talking about jumping back into Malifo um, post Adepticon. And mm-hmm. so I was like, well, I might as well buy stuff if they got it. 50% off, you can't go wrong. Yeah. I mean, our game group bought more than they expected to. I know. I know. Seeing that. Dr. Yeah. Dice. Dr. Dice was the well, one of the Dr. first Dice ones to hit it. Bought on everything and limited it for everyone. But. <laughs> No, I'm They're kidding. So I I was able to pick up two crews, one of which I actually wanted to play. Okay. Um, the other one, just because the way they do their master boxes for like the epic version or whatever you want to call it, it's mm-hmm. split. So I was like, well, if I'm buying this other master anyways, I might as well buy the core box. It's 50% off. Okay. Um, so I picked that up. Then Thursday, my first booth that I went to was Wild in the Streets. Um, I just really like those guys. They're they're great people. The game is super cool. They're they're revising it so it'll be a little bit easier. I'm hoping to get that on the table soon. Nice. Um, they have a, a new card game that I got the limited edition version of. It's called Record Collectors Are Pretentious Assholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That so, would be at all. <laughs> yeah, I, so I was super happy to go pick that up and chat with them. And uh, then I was pulled into the Bushido booth because apparently everyone was waiting for me to pick up Master Charlin so they could oh, sell yeah, her. Everybody was brown beating you on the boards. What can I get her? What can I get for Leopard? <laughs> oh, I can't get her until Cody picks up his. Tell him to go pick up his fucking figure. Yeah, so round two was starting in Moonstone, and here I am in the GCT booth, and luckily it was against my friend Travis, so it was just like, all right, well, I'll go beat up on you in a second. We'll get this taken care of. (laughs) Yeah, you're not going to take a lot of time. This will be good. Yeah, (laughs) so we did that. Spent. I bought all the Silver Moon crap, except for Jason's figure, you know. Um, (laughs) Save the $15. And the Imperial models. Uh, what, what the hell else did I buy? Uh, well, oh, at Bushido or at GCT? No, so that was GCT. I bought well, we do the easy one. Did you buy the you bought free blade, blade stuff? Yeah, I bought blade blades. Blood I bought blood and blood and plunder. So yeah. I bought some free blade stuff for my uh competition pieces for next Adepticon, so I could start working because one of them is going to take heavy sculpting and modding. Planning already. That's cool. Yeah. Um. I bought Blood and Plunder. <laughs> I bought some War Machine stuff. <laughs> I mean, the, models, you know, the local I guys mean, are looking seen, to get into it. Yeah, some of the newer stuff. I already I'm have not as, uh, I'm not as against <laughs> some of the newer models, depending on what they are. Yeah, well, Crix is coming out, so you'll just pick them up again. Um, I've been awesome. forbidden. I've been forbidden for playing the undead yeah. factions anyway. Yeah, whatever. No. Said that no one Cody said, said that. Oh, I said that. No, I was like, he played Cody good. said that, so and that's I why I like, picked up the silver machine. You're not playing cult. You gotta play something else. Okay, I can get yeah. you a good deal on these silver. Okay, there. I'll play that. Um, yeah, look at where we're at now. What else did I buy? So I bought the free mm-hmm. blade stuff. I bought that. Wasn't there like some dude that gave you like a cash deal offer for buying like a crap ton of stuff, or was that all free blades? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I oh bought, yeah. yeah, I bought a bunch of Morkborg stuff because the sculpts are awesome. And I, I was looking at it, and I was like, "Nah, I'm not going to spend any money." And then they're like, "Well, you should ask what kind of deal we'll give if you pay cash." And I'm like, "Okay, well, I'm dumb. Here's two hundred dollars." Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did sell a couple armies at Adepticon, okay. so I got like four hundred bucks for one of them, and so okay. it was kind of fun money. Okay. Um, <laughs> I I got a new painting light. I just ordered relic blades because of free shipping. Uh, Did you get any conquest? Oh, no. Uh, well, I I bought one figure and some <laughs> objectives. Um, but I did get a ton of new paint to oh. try out. So I got the. It's probably not going to show up too well. 
whatever direction. So this is the Cuttlefish Colors base paint set. Oh. Um, I've got their sketch and glaze set, and I was like, oh, well, base paint, you know, base sketch glaze should be pretty good. Right. Um, so far, I'm, I'm really liking it. It's got a very matte finish to it. Okay. So um, it's kind of fun. It, it's very thin, though. It's like airbrush ready almost. Nice. So that's been a little interesting to play with. And then I also picked up uh, the Monument Hobbies non-metallic metal gold set. Ooh, okay. So that is my... One of the things that I want to teach myself this year is non-metallic metal and okay. also painting skin tone better. Those are kind of the two goals to work on this year. Okay. That's good. Um, and uh, there's more, but I don't remember. Okay. Well, that's I, uh, yeah. Still finding it, it in bags. It it could be yeah. He's probably going through. It. We we're not even talking about swag bag. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll leave we'll leave swag bag. Maybe we'll just have a Cody unboxing swag bag episode. All well, I mean, I've, I've traded and sold a bunch of that stuff already. That's too. true. That I thought what I thought was amazing. What Doctor Dice showed me is that I think within the same day there was the the swag bag trade chat. Yeah on discord and people were wheeling and dealing like crazy oh, yeah. with that thing. I, I got out of my swag bag. I, the biggest <clears> thing <throat> other than the stupid box set that I'll never use uh, for tanks or whatever. Um, I got a Adeptus Custodes Vanguard or something. It's like a $170 box. Damn. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a, that, I was surprised GW was putting in free swag like that. Usually they do like one collectible, you know, one uh -huh. con figure or something like that. But man, they went all out this year. Yeah. So I'll get I'll give them a little. I don't like GW in general. I will give Same. them credit for that. Yeah, they and I mean they were generous. The, at a minimum, you got to start collecting box. Yeah, that's, so, that's the trick. Um, yeah, I did spend money there too. I bought the two, one of the con exclusive figs, and then one of the other. You bought of, that you know, uh, edition. The one for AOS. Yeah, I got the the weird cities of Sigmar dude, and then I got yeah. this barbarian looking dude. Nice. I like the other one, the the war or the, whatever that AOS like war cried like doctor thing. The that doctor. I almost yeah, that I almost yeah, was that's, thinking that's about getting that, but that was like what forty bucks. I was like, oh hell no. Uh, I think it was seventy seven for the two figures. That's yeah, still ridiculous. Not ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And that was yeah. almost how much I spent on the whole Bushido box set. There'll yeah, be another so episode like we'll talk figures. about best deals in gaming sometime or whatnot. Uh, okay, so that was so that was successful shopping. Uh, all right, so to, to kind of wrap things up because it, we talked, I think, about a lot about the good stuff, which is you know meeting old friends. I got to talk with Tony Marvola and his his. Uh, you got me monologuing where they were painting twenty four hours a day. You just come in, plop down, and start painting yeah. a miniature in, in remembrance of Kathy Waffle and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Um, I you remember know. that I after the Grandmasters, I was walking out and I saw Tony said hi to him. I was like, Tony, would you like some tequila and squirt? He's like, thank you so much. I'm good for right now. And I think I gave him some ramen. He's like, I'll absolutely smash that though. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, it, it, and that's the beauty of Adepticon. Even when you're out, when, once you get out of the, uh, out of the events and things like that, or even if you're in the events and you're not like the hyper competitive, uh, it, it's just wonderful. And and then seeing the display boards that everybody <sighs> brings, seeing the boards, the infinity boards, absolutely insane. Uh, I, uh, you know, I don't want to go longer because I, I do want one more thing for us to talk about. I do have to show this one board. It was a new board. Normally they have, normally there's one board that I love seeing every year, which is the, the, the uh, Aristea board that they yeah. play infinity on. But this new board it's a spaceport board or something. It's just yeah, ridiculous. It I, um, I went back and looked at it three or four times and saw new stuff. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was amazing. I uh, did not take. A, I didn't. I wasn't very explorative. The only thing I wanted is. to do was the pots from uh, from BattleTech, but I didn't get a chance to do. Oh yeah, the BattleTech pods. So, yeah, I kind of hope that they come back again with those. Next I have year. a feeling they will. They just took up space. But yeah, I mean, with the ne this board it, oh, with yeah, neon it's... lighting on things was just. Just cool. It, I mean, it's not as organized as as the Aristea board, but it's still it's still it's really nice. Cool. It's so cool. Yeah, I didn't even see like because that's a four foot by four foot board. I literally only saw like 
two feet by two feet of it the mm-hmm. first couple of times. I didn't even see the orange ship or <laughs> anything else. I just was so dumbfounded by the neon. Yeah, the, the guys do an absolutely stellar job of their boards. I mean, the Aristea boards over there, and that one gets probably shown the most of people seeing things. But just, just amazing yeah, stuff. They did a good job putting the two beautiful boards on the end caps because it made you want to walk down the aisle. Yep, absolutely. And I mean, I didn't even talk about, you know, the new thing I'm kind of looking at. This is another, is this Infinity? Yeah, no, this is something no, else. No, that's a... Uh... I don't even know what this is. It looks cool. It looks like War Machine. That That's like a War Machine. Not no, War Machine. Like, oh, it's Warcaster. Oh, no. okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Warcaster. I think. Oh, okay. yeah, because it's like that. Awfully, looks like a Warjack. That's on the bottom there. Yeah, that's Warcaster then. Oh, okay. Um, you know, and then there's some Blood and Plunder that was going on. Just, and there's the GCT booth. Oh, I, like that dual, I like that dual dice tray box. Where yeah. I was selling those. I wanted. I should have. Tried to grab that. Time. There's there's a freshly <laughs> shaved Gordon. Yeah, I didn't recognize Gordon when I saw him. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, Gordon's shaved. Yeah, that was kind of shocking. And this, so this is when the, I mean, they have a small 10 by 10 booth. Uh, this is when it was not as crowded. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it was always still a mob. Half a dozen people in there. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's stop sharing. Um, so yeah, just, just. Lots of stuff that you have, you know, pods and the, the, the meat, machi- uh, meat machine, meat machine, or meat grinder <laughs> on Saturday night. Um, and up with that. all friends. I to look at that, but trivia contests every night. Uh, if you're into just board games, or if you're there with a spouse, and maybe you don't aren't into miniatures, but just like playing board games, there's the board game library, oh, which, which is massive. Which is massive. Mm-hmm. You just go and play board games. Or you can just go sit and paint somewhere because they got the painting stations over at the uh, at the connected hotel. Just so much to do. Historicals, everything. It's just just lots of stuff to do. It's just a great time. Having said that, was there anything bad you could say about Adepticon? What were was there anything that was not a good experience? Uh, the one thing everybody will say: well, parking. Yeah, that's a given. Parking yeah. is is uh, parking is insane, and they're not going to get a the first. So they have an open field parking lot for some office spaces across from the convention center. Um, the first day, Thursday, they're like, "Oh, nobody park there," and then pe- there were people getting towed, and they were putting stickers on to tow you. Um, the next day, they must have talked with the city or something because yeah, then they started, Friday, like, Saturday, and Sunday, you trafficking. were able to park there. Um, so they, that, yeah. they expanded that because I think the city of Schomburg is worried about the convention leaving, you know, you gotta, it, it, so unofficially, the money. unofficially there was 8,000 registered, eight, about 8,000 or more registered people who were at Adepticon, which is up a thousand people from last year. Oh, it's more than that. It's more, well, that's the trick. And, and here's There's the thing with Adepticon because I think it was 500 registered last year. How many registered last year? I, I think it was 6,500. I can tell uh, you in about 25 seconds. Yeah, because I know they gave some stuff out. But the, here's the trick with Adepticon and why it's so rough to go on Saturday. Um, yeah, so 6,500. 6,500, they have the, the the numbers that I've been hearing coming out for this year are over 8,000, um, which is great. Still not, a, still not Gen Con levels of 72,000, but 8,000, that's huge. Add to that. You don't know how many people are just there visiting for the day and shopping, not necessarily playing in events. I'd say there had to be another 500 to 1,000 people who did that over the four days. Yeah, if not more. I mean, I had 12 people, 12 family members show up just to watch me play games. Yeah. Yeah. So, So, and they went through the vendor hall and bought stuff. (laughs) Just like because there's so much other stuff that I mean, there's gaming stuff there, but they got like plushies and jewelry and mm-hmm. oh, yeah, all my, sorts of crap. My wife's cousin bought, um, uh, there was an author there that was signing books upstairs, oh, and okay. so she bought the books and had them sign it and whatnot. And, um, so yeah, yeah, there, there's there's cool. lots of things for anything. I know Geek Nation Tours does a bunch of stuff where they'll take uh, people into the city and you'd be able to do things, you know, but if you're coming in from out of town. Okay, let's let me let me stay on target. So, aside from parking, was there anything else that you would say would be 
a downside to Adepticon. The one downer I had, and this was more during the Bushido tournament, was the the almost I'm going to call it the fraternity hazing style of all the nerds yeah, w- walking cool. down the main aisle saying, "I oh. am a dork" or whatever like that, while holding their 40k figures. I'm like. Okay, if that's part of the four man format, it's like okay, that's getting a little out of hand to be like, who's gonna shame? Uh, it wasn't the four. If it was on that. Friday, it wasn't the four man. The four no. man what, Saturday, Sunday, wh- whatever forty k yeah. event that it was, or whatever whatever game was workshop with. event that it was, Amy Ha. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's what, good. that 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 was just kind of like I don't get that at all, and it's not worth it. So I'm. I just I don't. Hi, Cody. <laughs> they they heard you. <laughs> I, I, that was my. That was really my only like. What the yeah. fuck kind of thing is this? Yeah, th- it, well, there was also a booth that like every hour on the hour was just like screaming, "We're annoying because we can be." And like, oh, okay. Then it's the, whoever those guys that were with it because they were saying the same thing when they were walking down during the masters. That's like. Yeah. Okay, like what, what what is this part of the event? Like what the yeah, fuck are you doing? I don't know. It was it was a little over the top. Like it's already loud enough. You almost need earplugs. And then you have that on top of well, it. Yeah, the guys marching. The, the only thing that I had with the guys marching is it's okay, if you're going to use your voice, use your voice, but the, the had, dipshit who was <laughs> leading the parade had a bullhorn. Yeah. Ow. Get out. That's Get out. And, and that was the same thing with the one of the booths. They had like a little megaphone thing that they were projecting. It was just like this is ridiculous. But my only other, I have two complaints, and they're they're very minor. Um, this is just for a venue thing. They didn't have paper towels in all the bathrooms, and I, I get the the air dryers and stuff. But make sure your air dryers are actually working. Because the air dryers in the adventure hall sucked. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah I, I basically I was grateful that the cleaning cart was sitting outside because I just used a towel off the cleaning cart <laughs> because I was like, screw this. Like, it, so that was a little annoying just because, I mean, th- there's a lot of people there and a lot of people weren't washing their hands because there wasn't paper towels and so. You know, I like a good friendly handshake at the start <laughs> of a game and at the end of a game, and it's just kind of. Eh. I, yeah, uh, I, I well, I, I like actually, I, I do love their air, the air hand dryers. I use those a lot, but yeah, they need to have some uh, having having the backup. But yeah, that does generate a lot of waste. So who knows how that is? But yeah, I could get that. Yeah, even like the <clears throat> air dryers, like twenty twenty two, whatever, they were great. But they've just been used so much that they wear out. Good, yeah. Um, wear out. The other complaint, and there's nothing we can do about this. There wasn't really any body odor that I noticed this year. It was the crop dusting was awful. <laughs> oh my god! The people would just walk down aisles, and I'm like, Perfect. really? <laughs> Usually, I blame Jason, but he wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's so a thing. Bad. Yeah. So in general, general hygiene was up, but yeah, apparently everybody was eating Mexican and <sighs> terrible. Let but yeah, uh, otherwise, like. I felt the venue is cleaner than it has been most years. Yeah, um, I will say that, especially with the bathrooms too. I think, and that's part of the reason why I think they stopped doing a lot of the paper towels in there. Yeah, was, is that it a lot it of gamers in general just yeah it was not. A I just started team. walking to the hotel because they have paper towels over there. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it just it was cleaner. Even though there was more people, it as disorganized as it is, it felt a little bit more organized. Um, at least where they had stuff. Right. So my my biggest complaint, if if it's even a complaint, um, and and keep in mind, uh, for one of the things that I do for a living um, is I do I go out and do conventions, and I actually work a booth, uh, just different type of business. Uh, so I'm very familiar with these kind of cons and shows and things like that. The one thing that I would say <clears throat> was getting a little out of control. And, and again, I don't know how it gets solved, um, was the vendors. We had a lot of vendors, which is great because there's a lot more stuff to sell. There's a lot more people plugging new products, these little indie games and things like that. It's absolutely wonderful. But they're coming out of the vendor area and they're now crowd, they're coming into where we used to do traditional gaming. I'm almost to the mind, and, and, the, and this is something that I still haven't figured out, 
and maybe it's less a complaint on the vendors and maybe more how things are organized. One, why don't you put all the GW, much like as uh, Atomic Mass Games pretty much had all of their games in the one hall. Oh, yeah, on the other side. Why don't you do that with all the GW games? Right. I agree with that. A- AOS and 40K could have fit in Adventure Hall Easy. and then pushed us all into Schomburg. Schomburg Room. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh, again, keeping in mind, I love the position of where we were at. Oh, GCT probably loved it too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I love where we're at and all the rest of that. But move, you know, put every put all that stuff in one location. So everybody who's 40K is going to be 40K. Everybody who's Atomic Mass is going to be Atomic Mass. All the other various games over here in Schomburg are upstairs. Um, I do know they hit, they have one huge room that was near the Golden Demons mm-hmm. that was all set up for one narrative. Uh, I think it was a 30K narrative event. Yeah, and that's how it is every year, though. I know. Mm-hmm. It, it just from my standpoint, it's, I think they could probably, and again, they're never going to kick it to the Hyatt, but they might be able to fit more various games upstairs. But that's neither here nor there. They try to do as best they can. Yeah. Uh, but that's because there's vendors there. So, because the vendors were now taking up place where you would have open gaming places or some of the small independent games that might be doing stuff. So it, it, again, it's lack of floor space. It, just for me, I would rather see it organized better. If you're a big company and you got all your games here and all your games there, everybody else in the other two rooms, it just makes more sense that way. Um, last complaint that I have, and again, this is nothing that the organizers of Adepticon can do, it's stealing chairs. Uh, yeah, that was annoying too. You don't see that happening too much in the Schomburg room. Right. It, it is. Carpet. Well, there's carpet, but they, again, and they're, they're the comfy chairs and whatnot. It's all the 40K people. It's the 40K guys. Um, I actually I actually got mouthy with one of them. Oh, and, and, and even Adepticon staff said chairs were a problem this year. Yeah. I remember because when we got, we set up on. Wednesday. 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 But even Thursday, we didn't have, we had only a handful of chairs for our tables. So the majority yeah. of our tables didn't have chairs. The only reason we had chairs on Friday for every table is I went to the staff of Adepticon on Thursday and I said, hey, I got a big event coming. I got, I got like 10 chairs. Mm-hmm. I need, I need more chairs. And then they laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> unusual for the style. well. Well, because they they, they go they don't they said we don't mean to be mean, but we we, we just don't have any more chairs because the the floor manager came up for who works for Adepti, the that does the Depticon crew again. Keeping in mind, all these people are volunteers. volunteers. Yeah, they're all volunteers. Um, he's like, there's no more chairs in the hotel. He goes, we might be able to get some other chairs from there. We're seeing if we could take chairs that they were using in the Schomburg, which were the more cushioned chairs. Which are and, the nice chairs. Which are the nice chairs. I won't lie. The chair, the plastic chairs they have for the convention center were horrible. Um, they were trying to see if they could get more of those chairs and bring them over, but they are two different entities. The convention center is different from the hotel. Yeah. Um, they did. They worked it out. Um, but at the time, he just told me, he goes, yeah, if, if an event ends, just and there's nobody there, just grab table, grab chairs. Yeah. So I did. But it's one thing to do that. It's another thing when you see people's got, they've got their figures, they've got the table set up, people are playing at it, they've just stepped away to go to the bathroom and get something to drink, and you come back and the chair's gone. Yeah, I actually had that happen during yeah. three blades. I stood up to move my figures, and my chair got taken. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I literally was just sitting in that, and I stood up, and it got taken. And... and Unfortunately, it's, you know, I hate to blame the, the 40K guys, but it's because they've got their friends and the family and all these other hanger ons and whatnot yeah, yeah. that are yeah. watching and they all get chairs. It's like, come on, people. Yeah, they, they could stand just like the rest of my family or whoever is coming here to watch and then they could go someplace else and sit down. They don't need to sit down. And so that's that's probably another reason why I want to lump them all together in one room, you know, and just. This, yeah. is, this is the GW room. I, I think too they did that you know GW's booth kicked out of the the vendor hall, so now it's an adventure hall, mm-hmm. which, which takes up floor space for games. Right, which sucks. But if you put everything over there, great. 
And I think the same thing needs to happen with Atomic Mass, because that booth keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it, it's taking up a good portion of the vendor hall. Same thing with a couple of the the newer like, painting companies. They had these massive yeah, booths. They massive, well, they're like, doing a lot of in-booth painting things and whatnot. Uh, yeah, but so, they didn't even use half the booth <clears> space. So, the, and this is the pro, the pro and con. This is me talking as someone who works shows and understands things. They're praying up primo dollar to get that True. space oh yeah True. and that goes to benefit us yeah with lots of different swag and all the rest of that stuff i mean not that the, the companies usually get it out for free but it, it does it benefits us with paying for things so the events don't just pay for themselves at you know by themselves right um the vendors the vendors are 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 footing a large bill yeah um so but i will say i did think atomic knowledge. mass I think Atomic Mass's setup for their tournament area was they had like their tournament headquarters, which was easily could have been ten rows of tables. Oh yeah, we could have put free blades. And I don't know why all it's, that over there. It's not like they had a computer server inside that Atomic Mass thing. Why do you need so much room? You're gonna give a break room for your guys who are working the tournament? They could sit and someplace else they go go get a hospitality room in the hotel or something like that so they could get completely out of the hall if they're resting right. or there's other swag in there i don't know why you need so much space that could be used for more gaming because in in their hall they had what do they had they had star war uh, they had x-wing uh marvel crisis protocol shatterpoint legions mm -hmm. yep. i said x-wing and that the was only that those four those took up a lot of land space it kicked armada over to the hyatt yeah oh wow yeah i don't even know where it was i could never find it well and i will say armada is the smallest draw of all of them but if you're kicking one of your games over to another place because your setup is too huge you got to consolidate and then i will the other thing is is a lot of them had very elaborate setups for doing top tables or doing live stream games yeah that's the nature of the beast that i could that i could live with that takes up space but that still took up less so they had two of those for atomic mass same thing with 40k four for 40k four for yeah two in the front two in the back yeah at the booth two in the front yeah yeah um but that that, 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 that still took up less at the same time, right? So. And that still took up less space. That that rig for Atomic Mass still took up significantly less space than their huge convention the tournament headquarters. Yeah. Uh, so that that that's been that that's kind of a big gripe. These big companies are taking up a lot of real estate. If you can't fit all of your stuff into one room, and that's a big section of the convention hall, reduce your footprint so that way you could bring it all in. Instead of kicking it over to the Hyatt. Again, it's Armada. I love Armada, don't get me wrong. But it is what it is. So yeah, those, again, my gripes, you know, chairs, towels, things like that. They're they're minor things. There's sometimes things that are out beyond the staff of Adepticon's control. Right. I guess it's it's more maybe I'm just sniping for things or things that will yeah. grind your gears when you're there at the con. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, the complaints that I had, like doesn't affect it. And I can be, oh, I can't go to Adepticon because they people oh, right. bust me or whatever. Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, I just wish I knew who it was so I could repay the favor. <laughs> Yikes! Uh, with that, uh, that I guess we'll 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 end on that repaying the favor. Pay it forward, people. Yeah. Uh, Should have done that in Bushido. <laughs> <laughs> chemical warfare so that has been our our wrap-up of adepticon uh not as many pictures as i would have taken again because one i'm terrible at taking pictures that's that's gaming jason's problem what do you uh, mean that's my problem i'm worse about taking pictures than you you get my picture you get the pictures of my I son from pictures. my wife i'll be honest i i should take more pictures i think uh I four but, pictures at adepticon <laughs> well and again i should be taking pictures of everything i'm just i was so overwhelmed with everything but to close everything off um you know adepticon 2024 was a success i loved it, it there you know even though we have a bunch of things and it sounds like we're really really upset about them it's upsetting just because it's such a good con and mm -hmm. i think i'm afraid of it moving yeah and that's well, the rumor that it is going to be moving in the near we're, future we're spoiled you're 15 minutes away i don't know exactly how far jason is i'm an hour away like i don't even have to stay at the con but mm -hmm. it's fun 
it's a whole vibe when you get to stay there. And if you're able to stay in the hotel that it's connected to, it's even better. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, I wouldn't stay at the, the other place again. Unless I absolutely had to, but having people oh. come up, I didn't know how. Oh, yeah. oh, the water. Westin? The Westin was awesome. Well, you no, stayed no, at the Hyatt. Oh. I stayed at the, the Hyatt Regency. That's oh, what I mean. Yeah. Like it was, oh. it was no issues, but staying at Adepticon is different. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole different vibe. But so, hopefully, you've learned a few things about Adepticon. Hopefully, you got to, a little bit of the little bit of the feel of it. Again, just what we talked about and what we experienced at the con was a very very small slice. Oh, yeah. of Adepticon. So definitely take a look on social media for a whole bunch of other things. You're probably going to see a whole, whole slew of stuff down the road about it. If you did enjoy hearing about Adepticon, you know, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell, subscribe, you know, that way, that way we know that we're onto something. If you have some Adepticon experiences, things you liked, events that we maybe missed, things you really just grind your gears about Adepticon, Put them down in the comments. We'd love to hear what your talk, what your thoughts about Adepticon were if you're there. Or if you'd like to, if you just have questions about Adepticon in general, put them in the comments. Love to see them. Love to answer them. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you so much for, for going through this. We hope you did enjoy hearing us talk about Adepticon and our experiences. If you do get a chance, we hope to see you in Sch lovely Schomburg if it's going to be there at, if uh, Adepticon's going to be at Schomburg Convention Center once again. Hopefully they'll have more parking. All that being said, thank you so much for watching. Hope to catch you again soon. We'll hopefully be getting some battle reports. There are going to be some other Adepticon related things that are going to be cropping up here. Uh, less talking, more kind of quick hitters like I've done. Anything that you guys got to say before I do my exit line? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's I'll hope it. Well, I ha I have figures painted, so if we play Bushido, you know, Ooh, these stuff Jason, will actually be up. I actually painted more, this year. Jason painting more Bushido figures. Uh, With that, I know it doesn't happen often. No, it doesn't. doesn't. With that, have a great day or evening, wherever you may be. So long, everybody. <laughs>